She could bat bat to do the bat. <laughs> I'm really disappointed I didn't bring my four, my set of four Hey Arnold shot glasses. Hello everyone and welcome to Sort of My Podcast. My name is Vincent Herman, Vin the Human, and sitting to my right... James Odell, Alpha Spectre. Across the table from him, Bob Collins, Boba Fett. And a special guest, uh, someone long overdue to appear on the podcast, is uh, Matt Owens, a contest winner from like a year ago? Two, a year and a half, two years, two years ago. ago. Yeah. yeah. Uh, say hello to the folks, Matt. Hello, everyone. All right. And uh, guys, you can go ahead and like Sort of My Brand and our new news page, Sort of My Comics, on Facebook. Subscribe to Sort of My Brand on YouTube and follow Sort of My Podcast on Instagram. Instagram, if I can get it out. Uh, you're listening to this somewhere. While here, why not comment, like, and most importantly, share? It's the way we get out in front of people. And all of our personal social media is down in the description below. And definitely give us some feedback. We'd like to hear about what you guys think, what you guys like, what you guys don't like. If exactly. You guys hate the sound of my voice and want me back off the podcast again. That's completely fine. Just <laughs> tell us something. Yeah, we are missing Dr. T Neil today. So yeah, we are. Um, Anyways, we we this is the the con episode where we're in the special edition. Mm, yes, yeah, which um, which which may be a two parter. Yeah, well, a little bit, kind of. Yeah, Ish. Uh, we we've got some interviews lined up for tomorrow that we don't have nailed down. So mm-hmm. so that may be in the next episode. But uh, before we get into all the con stuff, we're gonna go ahead and cover as much news as we cared to this time. It's gonna be a little different of a show. You're not gonna hear phone booth news, we're not gonna do comics, but we are gonna do a little news. And the first thing that I uh, I think we should talk about is John Favreau is gonna be writing and producing the upcoming live action Star Wars show, the first live action Star Wars show. And that's and that's for the, the Netflix streaming service and that no no well the net isn't it? The Netflix esque type Disney that's what I meant. streaming like, yeah, service. This is, yeah. Okay, I should have said the, I, I mis- yeah, mispronounced yeah, yeah, yeah. that. But yes, uh, the <laughs> Disney streaming service like Netflix that's coming out next year. Correct? Yeah, the untitled thing that they're doing. Yeah, and uh, who better than John Favreau? He he's the guy yeah, who he, gave birth to the MCU. Yeah, he kicked off the MCU with fucking Iron Man. Right? I mean... You don't care yes, at all. You, I agree. <laughs> you completely. apparently don't care at all. But but honestly, like, um, with with having stuff like, like, like a streaming service where they're able to flesh out mm-hmm. that much instead of just movies, the, the only thing I'm kind of a little concerned with, not necessarily with this, but with some other properties... Is that they they will not do anything rated R. I'm not even sure about PG-13. They've already about that. They've already said that it's all going to be family friendly. That's why all the Netflix Marvel shows are going to stay on Netflix. Okay. They wanted to keep the whole streaming service. I family hadn't friendly. read that yet. That's yeah, I hadn't why. Read that uh, um, uh, what is it? Cloak and Dagger is going to be on Freeform. Freeform is the old ABC family. Is Cloak and Dagger going to be that ABC extreme? ABC Family, like, and then it became something else. And now, and now it's Freeform. Yeah. yeah. But, but is Cloak and Dagger really going to be that, like, home uh, PG-13? You know? Like, you, it doesn't you, hell, like you might it. be surprised. Hell, okay. even Runaways had a little bit of some darker tones and stuff to it that was like, yeah, it's kind of, yeah. you know, which you need to finish, by the way. I do. Uh, so what do you guys think this show is going to be like? With John Favreau heading it up, like, he's got well, a wide range, but there is a feel to him. So what do you think that's going to be like? Well, we still have one more movie in the the new trilogy, which is kind of the end of the Skywalker-ish. Yeah, um, that's supposed to be the cat. And then, and then there's going to be a whole other set of films, correct? Am I, am I, or yeah, am I, well, that, you've got that Rain have Johnson nothing to do with his with, trilogy. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. There was yeah. another set of films. You know what I really hope this is? Knights of the Old, Old Republic. That would be cool, but it, and I really don't see them speeding towards it. Every time someone yeah. brings up Knights of the Old Republic, it's they seem to because the just first game was so it. great. I, never, I don't yeah. think I ever played the second one, oh. but the first one was fucking fantastic. I'm with you. I want it. Don't get me wrong. I want some... Side it, note, I want a remastered version of both those games on true. new consoles. Or at least a decent third game. I'll be fine with that. Um... But no, I don't think it's going to be Knights of the Old Republic. They've they've talked so long about doing like an underground thing, like mm-hmm. dealing with the bounty hunters and stuff. Yeah, because oh, wasn't there a what was was there a game a Boba Fett game that was in development for such a long 13, time? Thirteen, 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 thirteen. Yeah. That's what it is. 
Yeah, something like that would be cool. Or even, hell, give us a story of a whole different Jedi family. Or, you know, because, like, the, the main movies that we have as of right yeah. now primarily are, are all connected to the Skywalker family. Yeah. Give me another family. Give right. me a different Jedi. Give me some other stories and stuff. Like, Maybe I'll be completely set it down with that. During, uh, before the events of Episode 3, and it's just yeah. some uh, different Jedi from the temple. That would be kind of cool. I would be down. Yeah, yeah. I, I could get into that. All right, so let's go ahead and move on from this. I think we fleshed it out as much as we can. Uh, great that John Favreau's doing yeah. this. Though. I think they, all they in all, I think that's going to be like that's definitely something I'm going to watch. It's a smart move. And, yeah. and real quick, that Disney streaming service they said will actually be substantially cheaper than Netflix. So it has to be anywhere between like five and five seven dollars, eight bucks or something. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I think Netflix bumped up the price one more time. It's and like they're 13, they're like thirteen to fifteen bucks, bucks. yeah. Because really? I know that we have the Damn. one where it's uh, you can have four people streaming mainly That's because like of you. That's the fifteen dollar one, isn't it? <laughs> mainly because of Vincent. I will start chipping in anytime you hey, tell no, me. No, that I was going to ride the wave. As long as you're okay with us <laughs> changing your profile name to like Vin the Cop Guzzler and stuff like that, then we're happy. I haven't changed it once yet. No. <laughs> the only reason why she's changed it is because she's used it at her work. Yeah, for kids. Yeah. So that That's a story. As like, That's a story for another yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, all in all, I think uh, that I don't think that this could go wrong. No, they know what they're absolutely doing. Absolutely not. And we're gonna go ahead and talk about the new DC label that's coming out. DC Black Label seems pretty fucking cool. And uh, Odal, you you've got the skinny on this. Uh, yeah, go yeah. ahead and tell us what we can look forward to in, in DC's Black Label. Uh, basically, the Black Label is it, it's going to be more of a mature reader section of DC Comics. It's going to be out of continuity, uh, out of canon, everything, standalone stories, very similar to how Elseworld was. So, well, I was about to call it the excuse not to do Elseworlds. I was, I was thinking like the love child of Vertigo in Elseworlds. Kind Vertigo of, was yeah. kind of their more mature. That does kind of sound like it. And I was, real quick, like side note, I bet you Greg Capullo is really fucking happy about that name, Black Label. Oh yeah, since he's a huge yeah. BLS oh, fan. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's it's all stemmed from the success of their their other standalone stories from Elseworld okay. and how like Nightwing New Order was a standalone story and it's done really Why don't well. they or even Batman White Knight. Knight. Yeah, Why don't they just so bring back the Elseworld God damn label? It, I wish they would. Yeah, I mean, I'm okay with this whole black label thing. I am too. I'm, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. But, I'm just saying it's like they own it. It's there. We all want it. Do it. Me personally, I feel like they gave it this name so that they can tie like darker stories yeah. to them. Yeah. And, and it's it not, sounds more metal. Oh yeah, no pun intended, but it sounds more metal. But like we've got a bunch of different stories coming in. There's going to be Superman Year One with Frank Miller and J.R.J.R. J.R. Oh yes! Fuck! God damn it! Well, yeah. Okay. The, 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 the only only writing. thing the only thing that I'm okay with. Is that Frank Miller, J.R.J.R., they have the same kind of style? Because honestly, like, let's be honest, as much as I love Frank Miller, his art is kind of like it's cocaine kind of fueled, garbage. like kind of yeah. weird, fucked up. <laughs> and you guys, know my, you guys know my passionate hate, hatred of or J.R.J.R. J.R. J.R.'s art. Well, I because think like, we all have that. Everyone's movie. looking to yeah. the There's so many other good artists out there, yeah. and it looks like my son. <laughs> Either one is the one that wrote, that, that that draws that. But, but the, the but, two but kind of cancel each other. They do, out. yeah. And and, and honestly, each if other anything, out. like even it's not each other not only out. is that a nice little nod towards like the Daredevil Man of Fear, right? Or Man yeah. Without Fear, uh, which run. was a great. But yeah. but for some reason, it's something about like Miller's writing and JRJR's art just kind of feels like they they they, melt they deserve each other. Yeah. Other than that, like I don't like JRJR on just about. I would like to see a, a Miller-driven Superman story, uh, given what he's done for Batman and how much and Superman gets fucked. The, in only, those the only the only thing that I kind of worry about is that he's went on record multiple times saying that he just dislikes Superman. Well, maybe this That's is his of, attempt at making it. Well, work. getting away from the Big Blue Boy Scout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, yeah, there, there are some other go. stories yeah. coming in. There's uh, Batman: The Last Night on Earth, which puts Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo back in the seat on Batman. I don't care what it is. You put Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo together, I'm going to fucking spend and my money. I'm going to throw yeah, my money like, at you for it. This this I've, synopsis, like I am, I'm going to read to everyone. Read it to us, this yes. is great. Batman wakes up in a desert. He doesn't know what year it is or how the Joker's head is alive in a jar beside him. What? But 
It's the beginning of a quest unlike anything the Dark Knight has undertaken before. In this strange future, villains are triumphant and society has liberated itself from the burden of ethical codes. Fighting to survive while in search of answers, Bruce Wayne uncovers the truth about his role in this new world and begins the last Batman story ever told. That is awesome. Yes. Just flat out, Joker's head in a jar. You got me there. Okay. Real quick, <laughs> as, as a little as a little preview for what's coming later on in the episode, we actually get to hear from Greg Capullo's mouth pretty much what he's able to tell us about that story. Okay, we'll talk about that yes. more later. Yeah. But, uh, now, okay, so there's more stories. Uh, we've got yeah. another Batman story called Batman Damned from Brian Azzarello and Lee Bermijo. Very nice. Yes. Very I nice. Love, that's another fucking tag team t- like team up that I love. That's those are the those are the that was the team on uh, the Joker story, that standalone yeah. Joker story, the one that the art was heavily influenced by uh, Heath Ledger. That okay. Luther story. Oh, really? Is is Azarello and uh, what's his name? Beige, beige what? Beige um, I, I, Lee Bermijo. Bermijo, yeah. Bermijo. Those two, and then there's know. another Batman story we actually seen at the con today, and I pulled it up and I mentioned it to, another, to you. Oda. The other Azarello story. Yeah, it was a bat, some kind of Batman. Yeah. So I can't remember what it was called, but like those two together. Oh, it, yeah. It's like Snyder Capullo. It's like, I can get down with that. Yeah, it's it's a perfect team up. This one has me really interested. Uh, the one that you're on. Wonder now. Woman Historia, the mm-hmm. Amazons, from Kelly Sue DeConnick and Phil Jimenez. DeConnick is the one who took uh, Captain Marvel to prevalence. Like Ooh, okay, when you heard okay. that that run was doing okay. really well, that was DeConnick. Yeah. I was gonna say because like both their names, neither one rang a bell. But that's all I was about to ask. It's like what what do we know them from? Yeah. I'm, I'm down for that. So what's this one about? It is a Homeric epic of the lost history of the Amazons and Queen Hippolyta's rise to power. Featuring monsters and myths, oh. this three-book saga spans history from the creation of the Amazons to the moment Steve Trevor washes up on the shores That's of Paradise really Island, cool. changing our world forever. I'm wow, like, that is awesome. Like, yeah. Honestly, here in the past few years, I've become very intrigued by Wonder Woman stories. Yeah. Uh, like the the Grant Morrison's uh, Earth I, One Wonder Woman, I love. I think so we can all out, own mm. that that comes from our our enjoyment of her showing up in Batman vs Superman. I think that kind of sparked it for us. Oh yeah. I I mean maybe some people should be like it should have been more than that. Well, yeah. whatever you know, whatever did it for <laughs> us, it did it for us. So we're yeah. reading the books now. And well, yeah it. It is really a great story. Now that love of Wonder Woman can be, you know, spread across another Wonder Woman book, bringing back Greg Rucka. Ooh, and ooh, what do we got? It. It's Wonder Woman, Diana's daughter, and that's the working title right now. It's not finalized. And this one, it's been twenty years since the world stopped looking to the skies for hope, help, and inspiration. Now the world keeps its eyes down, and the powers that have risen have every intention of keeping things that way. Amongst the scattered, broken resistance, a young woman seeks to reclaim what has been forgotten, and on the way will learn the truth about herself, her heritage, and her destiny. That sounds great. That I, I can't wait to read that one, too. Everything in this so far is just like, I want to read that. Yeah. I don't have the money to read that. No, <laughs> right? Yeah. But honestly, if if you pay for one story, you pay for one story, I pay for one story. We together, know. we will share, and we will all. Uh, well, Bible. there are six books though. So, like each one of us tag team six books, and we've all got it. Yeah, two titles apiece. <clears throat> we got this. Yep. I mean, I'm definitely on board on the. Both Was that the last? Movies? You honestly know flat out. I'm buying both of those Batman. <laughs> <I'm so laughs> I, I'm on the Superman for sure. And even uh, Wonder Woman. Was dude. that the last one? Wonder well, Woman's there's on? there's one more, but it's not really the way that it appears. Is it's not going to be like any particular hero or storyline. Uh, it is the other history of the DC universe from oh, John Ridley. They were talking about this a while back, and this was before Black Label. I think they were had some sort of other icon ready to go for it. I think we covered this on the show. Uh, not 100%, but I know we posted it to sort of my comics. Well, I'll go ahead and like read this down because I skimmed through it and 
Okay, so the other history of the DC Universe is a compelling literary series analyzing iconic DC moments and charting sociopolitical games through the perspective of yeah. DC superheroes who come from traditionally disfran- disenfranchised groups, including Jon Stewart, Extraño, mm-hmm. Vixen, Supergirl, mm-hmm. Katana, and Renee Montoya, among others. At its core, the story focuses on the lives of those behind the costumes and their endeavors to overcome real-world issues. It isn't about saving the world, it's about having the strength to simply be who you are. That I actually know, sounds really good. Yeah. I know for a fact we posted that mm-hmm. to Sword of My Comics. Like, I, don't, months ago. I don't think we've discussed it, though. No, I don't I think don't, we did think it on the show. Up. But, uh, yeah, that does sound mm-hmm. really yeah. good. It's a great time for something mm-hmm. like that oh, uh, absolutely. In, in our world. And honestly, like I'm, I'm, I'm usually extremely intrigued by uh, stories of like not only just characters that you don't get to see a lot of. We see a lot of Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman. We see a lot of the bigger characters, but the ones that I guess you would classify as B list, maybe C list, even. Yeah. Well, I don't and, think John Stewart. No, 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 no. But some of those are John like, Stewart. Vixen, yeah, she's Montoya. Kind of, yeah. yeah. Tell me anybody that's not like really into comics that knows who Montoya You can't is. grab someone off the street and be like, tell me about Renee Montoya. Right? No. <laughs> yeah. But yes, obviously John Stewart. John Stewart has a huge fucking fan following. Mm-hmm. And and yeah. one big contributor to that was the Justice League show. Yeah. Yeah. The cartoon. Yeah. But but just being able to see like behind the scenes of some of these heroes, especially some of these more like grounded down to earth heroes, mm-hmm. I, I'm trying to see. So well, and honestly, I, almost every, literally everything that you you've named from this black label, I don't hear a single book. I don't want to be a part exactly, of. Yeah, that's, exactly. that's the same. Like my the least interesting to me is the Superman book because of JRJR, and that's that's the deterrent there. I just want to. I just want. And honest, honestly, I'm kind of the opposite. As much as I hate JRJR, but I love fucking Frank Miller. Like I said a little bit earlier, the combination of the two, I'm okay with. Yeah. But but as as definitive as Batman Year One is, I don't expect this to be like that. I don't expect this to to right. to, yeah. to hold the same light. But I want to see what he does with it. I oh, want to yeah. I want to see somebody who has publicly went on the record as saying that like he's not a big fan of Superman. I want to see him actually put some effort into it. And, right. and, and, and hope see that how, he actually puts effort into it. I hope so. Because, <laughs> I mean, we've seen with Dark Knight 3 that regardless, it, it was a little iffy. Regardless, they've got our money. And another yes. thing that has our money, uh, whether it's going to look good or not, is uh, actually Shazam. Like, we got to see it. We, we've run I, a nerd news podcast. I like what I'm see seeing it. so far. Um, yeah, that but, was going to say the same thing. And this post is blowing up for us. Like, last episode we talked about the uh, Jason Voorhees post that was blowing up for us. This There's, one's doing that, just as good. Hold up. I wasn't there for that episode, but just yeah. the fact that somebody has a Jason Voorhees statue at the bottom of a lake. At the bottom of a Michigan lake. Go to Sword of My Comics. Check that, yeah. that out. Yeah. Just the fact that somebody did that. I don't know who you are out there. I don't know if it came public on who put it there, but flat out. Yeah. You're a hero. They yeah, the, it, it's fantastic. But um, another thing I think is fantastic is this Shazam costume. And we got Dexter in the world. I don't know this guy's name. I, I, me neither. Oh, what what else has he been in? I know I've read it before, but it's, it's, it's nothing that him. I've seen. Okay, is and it just me, or does he almost look like the lead singer for uh, Theory of a Dead Man? I still think he looks like Jim from The Office. Like, that's the first person I think of. It's like, a little oh, bit. It kind of looks like he could be Jim's brother, bit. James. But let's let's or talk Johnny. about this costume, because that's that's the okay. focus of this. Here's this here's thing. my here's my input on the costume. Exactly Especially with the newest the photos that was that was posted, we get to see the front. Because the yeah. last the last photo that was leaked was a back view. Mm. And you didn't get to see the Yeah, it was the video yeah. that came out and everything, yeah. Um and like me and you were talking about off mic was that it looks like it's already lit up. But yeah, I feel the, like they're the going to add a little bit. Bolt. Yeah, the lightning bolt yeah. is already lit up. I feel like they're going to add a little bit something to that. But once you once those newer pictures were released, you get to see the texture of the suit, which is very. It's it's very it's it's, it's in the same universe it's as Superman's it, man, a uh, Superman uh, suit. Batman suit, there's some texture, there's a little yeah, bit of design. It's stylized in it. and everything. And it, it looks but really good. One thing that it, that it, it's different from so far what we've seen in the uh, DCEU is that it's very bright. And I think that's a fucking, that's a great idea. I disagree. Really? Justice League. 
Justice League, they okay. finally brightened yes, up Superman. Superman. Yes, but that was yeah. by the end of the... Okay, okay, besides that, prior yeah. to that, like, everything was a bit more muted. Even Wonder Woman was well, a bit I, more I muted. I think Superman Which I think was, was fine. In my own opinion, for some things, was fine. I think Superman was the foot in the door for that, because they yeah. people have been complaining about that for years, especially oh, yeah. dating back yeah. to the Man of Steel. And, and I don't know if I've ever talked about this on mic or not, but, like, by the end of, of Justice League, that Superman was the Superman that we've been wanting since oh, fucking... Yeah. Since I think we, I think we did mention that, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, no, and, and it looks like they're following suit. But on especially that. with this character, of course, make him fucking bright. I don't give a shit. You know what I mean? Personally, like I think that costume looks perfect. And you've mentioned Vincent. Well, you've yeah. mentioned before. If you want to go ahead and say it, yeah, we're gonna get into that for sure. I, Odo was was about to say something though. Yeah, I want to get Alpha Spectre's take here. Yeah. It's really bright and vivid. And like you guys were saying, like we've been wanting that brighter tone, and with Shazam, like even as Shazam himself, he's such a goofy character anyway. Yeah, he's, he's a he's child. A yeah, yeah, he's a and child. So like, I really think that'll translate well into giving us that like that brighter tone, like mm-hmm. such vivid reds and that yellows and everything. Attitude. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and from him a, being an orphan child and and given these powers and becoming a superhero, like I think if you were a child. Oh like, think of back, back at that age. If someone was like, here, you're essentially Superman. Here's, Here's a magic costume. magic powers that's like, going to turn you into a superhero. Go with it. Yeah. It's perfect. In my opinion, it's perfect. Yeah. The only the only small, very small complaint I have about it is it does look like he has a muscle suit on. And now, yeah, that that is what you were, but, you, what you were saying that, that I had to talk about. No, no, no. What I was saying was that the fact that Somebody said to you, it looks like bad cosplay. First yes. off, no, it looks like fucking fantastic well, cosplay. Now, like I said, this has been blowing up for us by yes. our standards. <laughs> A whole seven people shared it. <laughs> Woo! We got yeah. seven, everybody. Uh, so, but yeah, uh, it has been blowing up for us. And with that has come a little bit of a mixed bag. A lot of people hate this fucking suit. I uh, they think it looks like garbage. They, they hate how bulky he looks. And... To that, I have to say, you need to look at the comics because mm. Shazam has always been a larger. Super he big. looks bigger really than beefy. Superman. He, he is bigger. He than is Superman. Yeah. up, and and that's that's always been the the character. And then you add on to that the effect of the fact that you have a kid who has this overhyped version of a superhero as an alter ego. It just makes total sense it really that it does. would look this way. And it's also not the first time we've seen padding built into a suit. Do you really think that uh, Henry Cavill's abs and pecs are coming through that costume like that? Not even that. Do you really think that Ben Affleck... Yeah. No, because honestly, Ben Affleck's suit was molded onto a from a bodybuilder. And does no one remember the scene from Justice League? Where, yeah. like, that pivotal point where in any movie, whether it's Marvel or DC, there's at some point they get shirtless and you get to see all the muscle. Yeah. In Justice League, he took off the suits and he was wearing, like, an Under Armour shirt. Yeah. Because well, he knew I was about to say that, that, that yeah. Ben Affleck's like, ah, fuck it. You can totally see he tried for Batman versus Superman. And oh, yeah. And when Justice because League there came that along. Scene. There's that scene where he's, like, yeah. sledgehammer on a tire. And pulling you know the I mean? chain. Pulling the chain. Yeah. yeah. You see him shirtless. And honestly, like, for especially for Ben Affleck, like... Yeah, fucking damn. bravo, bro. You, you look good. It. And I honestly think that the reaction from Batman vs. Superman has kind of made him, which I always go back to that Hello Darkness, My Old Friend video Ooh, where he just kind of spaces out. Sad flex. Like, I, I really think that like that fucked with him, dude. Yeah. Because like, Affleck is a big fucking comic book fan. Well, not only and that, but he's Batman also... Fan. And then he was so like excited for that role and then once he got that role and it came out everybody shit on him well so I think he's he was also like, oh, more of a it. regular guy like he's he more really of a regular guy than most actors like Henry Cavill got shit on a lot too but look at him he's mm-hmm. powering through he's still Superman oh yeah Ben Affleck got shit on and it affected him and it, he's always been that kind of regular guy not that uh, not to take anything away from his talent he's a good actor no. he's a good director he's a great director yeah. uh, but, especially I mean just look at the past I don't know, 10 years or so in the movies he's been in, movies he's directed. Like, in my opinion, Gone Girl, uh, 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 I can't remember what the other name was. The, the one, Town? Yeah, I would say yeah, the, the one the with town. Hawkeye. Yeah, yeah. Like, those are great movies, in my opinion. I don't like The Town that much, but I like Gone Girl. I'm not going to lie, <laughs> I own The Town. It's still in shrink wrap. I haven't got to watch it. Uh, <laughs> but it, 
the fact that people think this looks like bad cosplay just speaks to their taste. It speaks yeah. to what they think. It, it speaks honestly, to what they know. Honestly, if that was you know? somebody in cosplay, that would win a contest. That, that, like, that, oh, that is yeah. a fantastic everyone, cosplay. If that was cosplay, everyone should just stop because it's exactly. not going to get better. You're not going to do yeah. any better than We're that. done. We did it. We we peaked cosplay. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. All in all, my, my, my overall feel over this over this movie so far, just the little bits that we've seen, I love it. The casting choices, the synopsis exactly. th- that we have, and the uh, well, like the vague, like, oh, this is what it's going to be about. Not an official um, synopsis, but in the costume, it does look fun. It looks it like looks. it's going to be a good movie. And this exactly. that's rare for me because I I wasn't looking forward to Justice like and I especially that especially for somebody coming something like this coming from you. Personally, yeah, that that Van is actually like I'm on board for this DCEU movie. Yeah, says a lot. I've yeah. been go back and it. listen to prior episodes where we talk about Suicide Squad. Maybe maybe <laughs> oh, the only maybe God, the only one that you probably Squad. actually was really on board for may have been Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman, I was excited um, for. Yeah, but but <laughs> BVS, uh, even Man of Steel, a character that you love. Yeah, you had a lot of you had a lot of flack for. I had a lot know? of reservations, exactly. and it is a flawed movie. I enjoy it. Is. I like, like I mean, yeah, I it's it. completely a flawed movie, but it's one of those movies that me personally like. I enjoy, yeah. and like I think me and you, especially off mic, have went back and forth a lot on. Absolutely. But, but you make it go all, tip for tat on the DC. <laughs> yes. That's for sure. But uh, all in all, I'm excited for this. Um, have they announced? I, th- I think I, I remember hearing before that Black Adam will not be in this movie. Whatsoever, no, no, no. Right? I don't think Black Adam is. The Which kind of bothers me. It's like, why the hell right. announced that Rock's going to play it like seven years prior? Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. I mean? Before we ever got any news on a Shazam movie, we were hearing about a Black Adam movie, and now we're hearing and, nothing. And Black about Adam was cast in yeah. and everything else. Now we're hearing before. nothing about Black Adam. But not only that, like they're they're they've already released pictures. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And well, 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 so. well. I don't know. Okay, the second set of photos is that officially released or? It, I don't think it, it's actually officially released. No, no, it's, it's still one. some fucker in Canada. Yeah. Just all right. Uh, not to plug another podcast, but I know you listen to the same podcast yeah. where they talk about. Uh, I don't know if you've listened to the most recent podcast of the one I'm talking about. I'm not going to plug it, but you know which one I'm talking about. Yeah, a couple Australian dudes. Yeah. Um, they talk about the, the first photos that were leaked were actually oh, listeners you know of theirs. No, like, the um, Weekly Planet. A lot of, a lot of great podcasts fantastic. plug other podcasts. Yes. Why not? Flat but, out. Yeah. Uh, well, I was trying to refrain from that because almost every time I'm on an episode, I fucking talk about either Kevin Smith's podcast <laughs> or the Weekly Planet. Because <laughs> yeah. those are the two main ones yeah. I listen to. But um, they were saying, apparently one of the, the, the person that leaked the first photos where you see the back of him in that Christmas town mm-hmm. is one of their, their dedicated listeners. Yeah, and, and he it was, sent it. And it was originally to sent to them before they even went online. And then it was posted in their uh, Planet Broadcasting Facebook page. The Great Mates. First. The Great yeah, Mates. Yeah, the Great Mates. Facebook. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Um, and before it actually went online and went viral. And what I was going to ask is, oh, those those newer ones, is that from... I, I would assume it's not official because if it was yeah. official, they'd do like a nice like background. Everything I've that. seen, all the articles I've read, it is not official uh, as far as I know. They look too good yes. to be just a dude taking a picture with a cell phone. Okay, but, the first yeah. ones I completely understand. That could definitely be for somebody sneaking yeah, yeah, by. Yeah, yeah. And after hearing the backstory on it, like they were threatened, like the security was threatening them and everything else. Yeah, but the newer ones, they look like they're really good shots. But if they're smart, go ahead and fucking release it. Go ahead and right. release good photos. Yeah. I mean, like like what Marvel does when there's a leak of a trailer, they say fuck it and just go ahead and release the trailer. Right. Except for Infinity War, they waited a while. Yeah, they did. Yeah. And uh, since we're on the subject of trailers, why don't we bring up uh, probably the cutest fucking trailer of the week? And this is something oh, I did not know I wanted until I saw it. It's so great. Uh, we got the uh, what Christopher Robin? Christopher is Robin. I keep calling it Winnie the Pooh, but <laughs> uh, with Obi Wan and Harley Quinn. <laughs> is Tara Strong in it? No, Margot Robbie's in it. Margot Robbie's in it? Yeah. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Ewan um, McGregor. Ewan McGregor and, of course, Pooh. Yeah. This Which, such... whoever is doing the voice of Pooh is obviously the person that does the voice of Pooh in Either that or they're else. a perfect imitator. Oh, yeah. Like, it's I don't so think good. it's... Because the original voice of Pooh, if I'm not mistaken, may have passed away. I don't know. I can't remember if he has I, I'm, I'm known for giving a lot of like misinformation on this <laughs> show. But uh, so, at the what... very least, I'm pretty sure it's at the very least the same yeah. person that does it for like the new like CG-ish show. Yeah. If it's even still on air. 
So basically what happens in this trailer is uh, we, we see Christopher Robin's grown up. He's middle-aged now, and uh, there's some sort of turmoil within the family. He goes to what I assume is the Thousand Acre Woods. Uh, it's not really clear about that. I've seen the trailer Acre Woods. so far. Yeah. Um, One and million acre woods. <laughs> he he sits down. I am thinking of a completely different movie. Are you? <laughs> he's, <laughs> you not he's thinking of Human Centipede. <laughs> or something Have you not seen this trailer where they sew the mouths to the asses? No, yeah. no. Uh, I remember seeing a trailer, and I could have sworn that's what this was for. It was the basically the origin story of how Winnie the Pooh came to be a, a children's book. No, that is no, not. You, what I don't know what you. Yeah, watched, I don't know what no. you saw. You you saw too. Yeah, we have a spectator. Okay. Well, 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 off, off Chris, mic is my my sister, um, <laughs> Matt Matthew's wife. And uh, she also says she saw it. Well, like, is there a second? Christopher Robin is named after the yeah. guy who wrote it's son. Yeah. And, and yeah. like, they move out to the country and, like, all this and that. That is not the Disney yeah. film at all. Yeah. All right. I, I think what's best here, and let's, let's go ahead and watch this real quick. We'll pause and then, then we'll come right back. Okay. All right. So now, now that we've seen each other's trailers. Actually, yeah, yeah. we went ahead and watched the uh, biopic trailer that you had seen, Odal. The, yeah. the ants to the bug's life, or the volcano <laughs> to the Dante's Peak, or whichever you yep. prefer. You and know, you have I seen like Chris the Robin. movie Ants. So do I. Yeah, of course. So does your kids. You know, everybody's got to buy the Kroger brand. You know, somebody... It's a great value brand. brand. <laughs> it's, it's there. You know, somebody's going to buy it's it. It's cheaper. It's more affordable. I get it. <laughs> Let's get back to the actual trailer here. I, I think this movie, Christopher Robin, looks just gorgeous. It, it looks beautiful. So just, just watching that, what is it, minute it's, or so yeah, long it's just trailer? A teaser. It, it's made not me, it gave movie. me goosebumps and made me want to cry. It's so special. It's and seeing it's seeing a grown man who obviously it's it's almost like a it's almost like a hook. When Peter Pan kind of like loses kind of touch, forgotten, yeah. And then he gets he gets that little bit back. Where it's like, oh my god, this is gonna be great. Like, it, this like is even the talking Winnie about the, it gives This me is the Winnie man. the Pooh version of Hook. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm completely like, I will throw all my I'm money. I'm sold. At it. We're get, we're going to see this one for sure. Uh, that is, of course, if the world makes it that long. Because I'm, I I think I said this on the last podcast or one of them. Fucking Elon Musk is a super villain. I'm saying it right now <laughs> because. Do you know what he's doing next? Not only did he sell flamethrowers to fund underground tunnels, which he says will help traffic, Those and then air, he there throws, are air quotes there. By the then way, then he throws a Tesla out in space just because he can. Yeah, I'm sure you did that like hundred million dollar thing just because you can. Just because fuck it. But now Elon Musk and SpaceX are putting. 4K cell service on the moon. Who needs cell service on the moon? And, Unless they're gonna build a fucking base there to destroy the planet, aliens. There's, Maybe Elon Musk is an there's alien. There's aliens <laughs> with old cricket wirelesses, and they need some good. Now, service. now we, we we have to say that whole section there just kind of sounded like we were like crazy conspiracy theorists. No, I like, but seriously, who does this shit? Who who puts cell service on the moon unless they intend on like residing there? You Elon know? Musk. <laughs> Elon yeah. Musk does. He's going to that too. He's going to build a house there. He clearly has just, he's, he's Bruce Wayne. No, no because, because Bruce Wayne used his money to, to fight crime. But he had he, to put on the show. He's, he's like a you know bored I mean? Lex Luthor. Well, there you go. There really, you go. yes, yes. Uh, on, honestly, I think this move means that uh, he is funding the Did Death you say Star. say move or moon? Move. Oh, okay. I think this uh, move to the moon is... is him, I think next we're going to find out he's funding that Ronald Reagan Death Star program, but it turns out it's not a laser that shoots uh, missiles out of the sky, it's a laser that shoots the world out of the fucking sky, and he's just going to go. That's no moon, Vincent. <laughs> That's no moon. <laughs> not according to Elon Musk. It's I, a just, cellular We all think that he's an, a, an economic champion, but I, like, who puts cell service on the moon? I'm terrified of this I guy. bet you Darth Vader would fucking put, dark, would yeah, put cell service yeah, on the moon. Yeah, Darth fucking Vader. 
Um, now we also had the uh, Luke Cage season two trailer come out. Did you, did you guys see this? I did not see it because I haven't gotten a chance to start on Jessica Jones. Well, there's there's not a whole lot about it. Uh, there's not too much to it. Uh, I feel they, wait, wait a minute. My assumption I bet it, is probably does he get right. shot at some point in that quick trailer? Yeah, does it show that he can stop bullets? Uh, it seems like he's making some sort of vlog at the same what? time too. It's it's pretty awesome. It, it's kind is of he like competing a, with us. No, it's fuck kind of Luke Cage. It's kind of a thing where he's like, "You want to come fuck with these streets? Come fuck with me." You know, I'm does, unbreakable. Does <laughs> Luke Cage have a premium Snapchat account? I bet he does. I bet he does. I, I, I would have pay ten dollars a month. You get to see his whiner. Either way, it looks really badass. I don't want to pause for another another trailer, but yeah, uh, yeah it looks really cool. I'm excited about it. For I sure. loved. I love the first. Oh, we already so. know that Danny Rand is going to be in this one, and uh, the first two times we saw Danny Rand, it it was all filmed before the the fallout mm-hmm. and stuff. Yeah. So we might be getting a better Danny Rand. We might be time. actually getting some. Kung Fu action from a right. person who is like supposed to be like highly trained in the martial arts when Daredevil was uh, and kicked his ass at any There point. have been some in- images from this season two that came out with Misty Knight and the bionic, uh, bionic oh, arm. Jesus yes. Christ, yes. I'm really just myself. And yes. honestly, like with with Iron Fist, I I never been a big fan prior. Odell's the one that got me into it. He got me pumped for the show. He had me reading some fucking trades and stuff, and I was like, man, this is a badass character. And then when the show came around. It would be badass if I, think, I was really interested in board meetings. I think we talked about that on TMP Goes, or SMP Goes TMP Part 2, which we're here now. That was, I think, the last thing we uploaded. Plug, the last plug, time plug, 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 um, <laughs> plug. Uh, uh, let's go ahead and uh, move on, and let's okay. talk about these six uh, or seven, depending on which article you're reading. Um New, the the new Marvel films, the yeah. untitled ones that just got announced. Fantastic Four. Okay, are, 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 I, was, I was about to ask. Are we going to speculate what's coming? Yeah, I think we should speculate. Okay, um, and I, and I want to agree with uh, Fantastic Four, but I really don't think. Okay, we're ready for let's hypothetically go ahead and put this out there now. Let's say no no Fox properties. No, okay. because like I said, it takes twelve to eighteen months for this deal to go through. Let's yeah. say it goes through. These these are slated what for twenty twenty through or twenty twenty one through twenty twenty two. Oh, are they? Okay. Yeah, and uh, one year's worth. Yeah, more or less. Well, like three years, seven, yeah. two three years, year. seven seven movies for one year. No, 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 no. Twenty twenty one, like the early twenty twenty one to the end of twenty twenty two. Yeah. So it's still a year. Six to seven movies over the course of the beginning of one year to the no, end of the next. Twenty one to twenty two. The beginning of twenty one to the end of twenty two. Okay, okay. Well, I'm still, leaving all years. that in. Still, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> well, I've had a lot of that law already. Well, no, look at still it. two years. We're getting oh, black. Yeah, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Fuck, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Shit, they've been pumping these bitches out like fucking babies and shit, man. Mm-hmm. Or motherfuckers trying to get some good checks. So, uh, so I'm going to agree with uh, maybe X Men, but okay. I'm definitely going to agree with uh, okay. Fantastic. Well, okay, let's just hypothetically throw this out there. Two movies are already taken up by Fantastic Four and X Men. Let's just yeah. say that. Now we um, got some sequels in there. There's definitely going to be some sequels. I feel like there might be a third Guardians movie because Guardians so far has been pretty definitely. successful for him. Yeah, Twenty One uh, sounds like um, right. I see a Guardians movie. Um, I definitely see, like. It. There's another Spider-Man movie. Uh, I don't know if yeah. that's going to count into yeah. this phase or if it's since the Sony. Like, I'm I not really like sure that's how that works. 2020. But maybe either way. Yeah, maybe. I feel like there's going to be a sequel to to Homecoming. Um, Black what else Panther we got? two. Black they're Panther, already talking about they that. Better. Yeah, but that that movie has made them some fucking. I don't know if they concern. better. Because, like, I mean, we've gotten a, a fantastic, gr- great movie, and there's going to be so much hype going into the second one. I don't think it's going to deliver. Oh, you, the, the, it's easy I, for sequels the, to fall the into the that trap. The sequel will deliver? Yeah. No, probably yeah. not. No, but what? But no. they're going to make a second one flat out. You know that. What do you think about um, like the new Avengers? They, yeah, let, be let's, another... let's go for some outside of the box things here. Let's, some new Avengers. Okay, I'm thinking. I'm thinking by bringing in uh, Miss Marvel. And the Cree and like every, everything else is going on. The and scrolls. Uh, what's her name? Uh, T'Challa's sister. Shuri. Okay. Yeah. I, um, honestly, I feel like we're gonna get like we're gonna start working up to a secret invasion event. And I was thinking, and I can't take full credit for this. It was on something I love to probably Weekly Planet 
or something I, I else. Know what um, you're... Essentially, she's going to be like the Riri Williams for Iron Man. Yeah. Because she's a fucking genius. You know what I mean? She's great. And, and uh, what, what you were referring to is that they were hoping that uh, Re- or, uh, Shuri was going to meet was gonna yeah. be that as you know, quote, was it, well, quote, no, was gonna quote. meet Tony Stark, and they were gonna have their own. Well, I mean, I mean, you even see inside the like, Infinity War trailer that like yeah. Tony's new armor is kind of almost like Nanotech. nanobot, yeah, kind of like, like what she gives to Tony. Almost exactly yeah. like the black, new Black Panther. Now, well, now you gotta think in one of his last suits, it was nanobots. And it movies, wasn't. Are you, because, talking, are you talking about the one that comes out of his watch and everything else? Yeah, like they actually. But it was. Came it was not. Really, yeah, I don't really think that was. Nano. No. Yeah. But um, but but by the end of Black Panther, spoilers. Uh, from here on out, if you haven't yeah, watched yeah, Black yeah, Panther, we've stop. got Black Panther spoilers. Uh, maybe we go ahead and skip ahead two yeah, minutes. I have a couple minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Two minutes. Um, yeah. At the end of of obviously the first cut scene, the first uh, post credit scene of Black Panther is whenever T'Challa is announcing to the world, essentially like the end, kind of like the end of Iron Man One, where it's like yeah. there he's opening himself up and Wakanda up to the world. Uh, the second post post or no 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 the, okay the 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 ending of the actual movie was where they they open up like the um the, the center the center yeah yeah, 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 yeah the yeah, center yeah, in yeah. Oakland where they're. Uh, uh, oh, the community yeah, center, the, 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 the outreach, outreach center, center. Outreach center. And the outreach scene. That's yeah. what I was gonna. And then and, the, and the then mid credit scene was where they're. At which, the by UN. the way, apparently was supposed to be the end of the movie, but he he wanted to start the movie and end the movie in Oakland. Which okay. so my original fucking thoughts were right when we finished yeah. the movie was that feels like that should be the end of the movie was the end of the movie originally. Yeah. But but, uh, but basically this opens up the technology for Stark he, yeah. to fuck with. Yeah. But 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 the common technology is out there in the world. Yeah yeah yeah. So who's to say that fucking uh, what's her name? Uh, Shuri. Shuri. Yeah. Who's to say that like Shuri and and Star doesn't fucking well, like link up and like work their geniuses together to fucking make some new shit? Now I have another idea on the whole um, uh, new Avengers idea mm-hmm. with uh, Captain Marvel being set in the nineties, an established hero, and Miss Marvel, the one in the comics right now, being inspired by Captain Marvel. Who's to say and in humans being established in. Marvel's Agents of Shield. Who's and to say the human show? Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Uh, who's who's to that. say we can't get Miss Marvel in in this like, upcoming phase? Kamala Khan. Oh, definitely. Yeah, Kamala Khan. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, 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 and apparently, as granted, I haven't read any of her run. Like you guys both know that I'm more of a DC guy than a Marvel guy. I don't hate on Marvel whatsoever. Like by all means, but like I gravitate more towards D- DC characters. But apparently the, that new Ms. Marvel, the uh, Khan, yeah. or whatever, Khan. Kamala Khan. Kamala Khan. Yeah. She, that, that arc is a good arc. Yes. Yeah. Uh, um, it would be, be kind of stupid on their part if they don't capitalize and on And then that. we've got Nova. Uh, the yes. Nova in the comics yes. right now that is, uh, thing. It could be born out of, because from what I hear is that Thanos is going to fuck up the Nova Corps. And we could get well, our we got, current he, Nova. You out see, of that. you see in the trailers, he has uh, I can't remember which 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 Infinity Gem or Stone it is, but you see, he already has it on his gauntlet, yeah, which is the one that the Nova Corps has yeah. in protection that you see at the end of Guardians One. So yeah. obviously, at some point, he goes there. And our cur- our current comic Nova could be born out of that in the MCU. Yes. So yeah, it, it really is possible we get the new Avengers. Um, but what, but what else? What else is out there? Okay. What else can, um, we, what can we get from this? What other newer movies? Uh, obviously, wait, Ant Man and Wasp is that That's is that before coming. this phase ends? Yes. Or is it before? The yeah, next and phase? it's set before Infinity okay. War. Okay. So. Well, obviously, we have the sequel to Infinity War in the next phase. Yeah. Like I said, let's hypothetically say we have one X Men, one Fantastic Four. We have that Infinity War. We have possibly a. Uh, Black Panther trailer or Black Panther sequel, maybe a, a Captain Marvel sequel. Just depending no, on not by not that, not, by not that, that fast. Soon. You don't think? Yeah, not that soon. Okay. New Avengers. Let's say New Avengers. Okay. Yeah. Let's say New Avengers. So, so what's the outside of the box character? Because they're they're not gonna like let this all be sequels or play yeah. off of. So yeah, Wonder, but granted, there's a lot of characters. Wonder Man is an interesting idea. Yes. Yeah. Because they're they're actually bringing him back into play in the comics right now. Really, with uh, like here towards the end of their their legacy and end of what, uh, into fresh start, fresh start. Okay, yeah. that, so that's five right now. We got, 
And then uh, maybe we, we've already Warlock. said uh, Spider Man, and most likely will probably. I think that's 2020. I, I think we're going to get that sooner than, than 2021. You yeah. think so? Okay. Yeah. Well, it was such a popular movie. Okay. Yeah. It was spawning out. Okay. Of so, so the next phase is twenty twenty one to twenty twenty two, correct? To the, the beginning of twenty twenty one to the end, end of twenty twenty two. So yeah. literally two full years. Yeah. Uh, what else? Maybe what other movie? characters do we have? Maybe. Some Granted, there's some other movie. bigger. There's some other characters yeah. that are more well known. That I just Doctor kind of, Strange. Yeah, maybe a sequel to Doctor yeah. Strange. Maybe a sequel to Doctor Strange. Um, uh, or somebody from Because there's some so. characters that they haven't even utilized Well, what yet? about Totally yeah. Awesome Hulk? They don't own... Uh, Universal actual, does not okay. own... Amadeus show does exist in this universe. And and he isn't owned by uh, Universal. Okay, that, yeah. that's what I was going to ask. Okay, because yeah. obviously Universal owns Bruce Banner and Bruce Banner's Hulk. Yeah. And that's why the only time we're really seeing any good arcs with Hulk, and apparently they're still going to continue with. I can't remember where yeah, I, I they're read doing that like at. a three arc. Thing they're they're they're, pre- they're essentially doing the story of Hulk within other people's movies. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I don't know if whether or not like is it just anything that's Hulk uh, Universal still has so, rights yeah. to? Because if not, then yes, I could totally yeah. see that. Give it I time. Can... Disney will buy them too. Yeah. This is going to own everybody. Well, if, if you guys listening have any suggestions or anything you think oh, should be a, a upcoming Marvel movie, throw it down in that comment, se- uh, in section, comment section. If you gotta, want, if you want, if you want to send the the page a personal voice message, just tell us how fucking yeah, wrong maybe, we are, maybe how we'll, right we are, whatever. Maybe we'll Fuck. throw it up on it this might thing. Be yeah. on an episode. Who knows? Maybe we'll throw uh, but we do need to move uh, move on. Uh, <laughs> did you guys see the Mary Poppins trailer? No. Um, All right, we're gonna see no. that then. Okay, let's. Yeah. Uh, but this, and and so yeah, this this next thing is is crazy. I it's didn't even know about this until you t- yeah. you you were talking about it on a ride here to the con. <laughs> it's and not as soon as you said really, it, I want it. It's not even really nerd news, but we gotta talk about it. And what, apparently, okay. former President Barack Obama is gonna be producing shows for Netflix. He's he's in meetings okay. now, pitching ideas and stuff. And me, me personally, I'm a huge Obama fan. What, not just like what he's done as a president, yeah. but just as a person, he just seems like a fucking yeah. Let's guy. not let's not get political. But, but, but as what, a person, what, but what yeah. I'm saying is, let's put political views aside. Yes. as a person, he's funny as hell. He's charismatic. He's, yes, he's charismatic. Fucking, he has a kind heart, dude. Did you see like, him? Oh no, are you talking about? Are you about to talk about the playground? Yes, dude. That yeah. made me seriously tear up, bro. That like just great. like. God damn it, dude! He's such a good guy, and then Michelle is such a good woman. But right. but put your political views aside. You cannot deny this dude is not this he's personality. Not funny. You put this personality dude. behind a show. If you, if you watch uh, what's it called? Uh, and my next guest, or whatever it's called, that yes. that, that Dave Letterman show, or even uh, comedians of cars getting coffee. Yeah, he you was get on to, that. You, too. you get yeah, to yeah, see yeah. a little bit of of Barack Obama you behind get a the scenes. Behind and the he is hilarious. He's that or that guy. video right before he went out of office with him and Biden. I don't know if you know what I'm talking <laughs> yeah, about. I did, yeah, Shit yeah. is funny, bro. He's uh, a funny dude. He's a good guy. I I, I can't I, wait I, for this. I don't I don't care what it's about. I don't. I yeah, I don't care if it's a drama. I don't care if it's a comedy. I don't care if it's a sci-fi. I don't, I don't care if it's a fucking hentai porn. I want to watch this. What what? Most like g- given our exposure to Barack Obama, what would you guys most want to see from him? A what buddy com- cop film. <laughs> a buddy cop film. <laughs> yes. Cop and yes. Bring Biden in. But it better be him and Joe Biden, bro. Yes, him and Joe Biden. <laughs> yes. Like I want more of him and Joe. But and, they're and because but they're, of the memes, they're because the president. The they're not cops. They're the president and the vice president solving it's like, crimes. It's essentially like Lethal Weapon. No. Or they get, or it but they're the vice, and they're getting, life. they're getting people a lot of jams. You know what I mean? They're solving <laughs> mysteries. You might even have a dog. I don't care. I don't give a fuck what it is. I want to watch this. I want their dog to be called Washington. Oh god, their dog Washington. Maybe Bush. <laughs> Just yes. Bush. Yes. I uh, I dig that 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 is that is the because best Obama has to clean up Bush's shit all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I'm sorry, I didn't want to get now, political. And then like you I got did. political. Now. I did. Right. Now, yeah, well, now this is okay. Political. Well, we all want to see it. Let's move on to the next episode. Oh, we don't want that press. Don't share this out of hate, please. I don't care. 
Uh, all right, so that, that's actually going to round out the news for us, uh, which is going to bring us into, uh, I don't want to say a new segment, because it's okay. not going to be a regular okay. thing. But. And uh, so what we're going to go ahead and talk about real quick is uh, we're going to talk about the Lexington uh, Toy and Comic Convention. Comic and Toy Convention. Comic and Toy Convention, thank you. LCTC. LCTC, yep. <laughs> All right. 2018. All right, guys. I'm sorry. LCTC 2018. Yeah. Uh, so Which has been really good. Our to first us. day. Yeah. We're Dude, we're only on our first day. Our first day, day and it's a yeah. short day compared to the other two days. Yeah. Has been so far splendid, bro. Really? I don't know how how really? else to say it. There's no word to describe how good this. Not only not only do we get to rummage through a few boxes, you know, mean find some good deals and some variants and sketch covers. You guys have seen my stack for sure, yeah. But we got, I think, pretty much all of us got everybody that we want signed or like what it said commissions for. I have not visited the like uh, movie and TV celebrities yet. I think there's one or two. The media guests. I I did a walk around, which I was very quote unquote disappointed for. Really? Which, <laughs> yes. Wow. Once, oh. once a video is posted onto the page, people will understand what I'm talking about. I was so disappointed. Oh, uh, yeah. Look for that and, on the Instagram yes. page for sure. But I th- with what we're about to talk about and with being able to get certain yeah. signatures and stuff, like, it was a very fun, successful day that if honestly they're like uh something happened we can't do saturday and sunday you guys can just go home and refund you your money up it like, really would it was worth it that would me. be a yeah. bummer but that really would be like i, I would be fine with yes. it. yeah because the majority of like what we wanted and then beyond what we even thought we could get happened because really the only celebrity guest that i want is the um and i i haven't memorized tara her strong. name i didn't uh tara I didn't strong. write her name I the only one i give a fuck about is tara strong tara strong is one i want to but uh the the woman who did oh, the motion capture tara strong. yes you're no right. the woman who did the fucking motion oh. capture for princess leia in rogue one. Oh yes yes yes, yes, yes. i want her because that tara is strong he, so that was actually uh, good, that's offensive to the the woman no, herself. But yeah. yes, I, I seen that she was announced not too long ago. That yeah. it, I, like, that's the closest we're ever gonna get. As creepy as it sounds, I really want to meet the girl that plays Selena Kyle on Gotham because yeah. she was just announced fairly recently. And no, like, oh, I mean I follow her there. on Instagram. Dude, like she posts some cool, funny shit. Yeah. No pun intended. She's such a cool cat, bro. She really is. <laughs> yeah. and, there's all the puns. So there are definitely the there's puns. definitely still more for us to do at this con. But between the booths that we we visited, the deals that we've gotten, the signatures that we've gotten, but uh, on top of all that, the icing on the cake for this weekend. Five dollar twenty ounce Pepsi's. Yes, right, right. Where else can uh, you, you go can't beat it. <laughs> to get an ice cold Pepsi for five dollars? <laughs> the Rump Arena. No, no whole ounce. For real, you, you just threw that number out at random. But I heard. No, no, no it's not no, at random. It's not. At There's vending machines. Five dollars for no, Pepsi. When, when you go to that little uh, like a restauranty area where you the get con- the beer, the it's stand? six dollars for a bottle of water. It's. I know. Yeah. That's why when someone said, oh, they serve beer over there, I'm like, I'm not fucking taking out a small loan to get a beer. Convenience <laughs> prices well, to the next You level. guys were all so sketchy that they, they took your Gatorades, but I made it in with Dude, Apple Juice. Yeah. No, okay. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Tiffany. Let's bring it down. Let's Tiffany down. was able to bring in a full bottle of Gatorade. <laughs> Matt was able to get in a full fucking bottle of apple juice. I legitly had to leave a, an open bottle of Gatorade that I tried to offer to all the security guards. Like, you want a Gatorade? Yeah, no, Gatorade? he was he you was announcing it at the at the. It was like I was waving around a bomb. Yeah. Like, does anybody want this bomb? <laughs> Who wants this? Anybody want this pipe bomb? This Nobody. Okay, fine. Gatorade. I'm gonna leave it here like, for all the children. I'm, I'm at the point too. I'm, I might try to take in some whiskey tomorrow, and then I will just. <laughs> and I'm not even counting the fact that like. Like Dude, I'm really, oh god! They lackadaciously, the swords, god damn it, they lackadaciously check those bags. I could sneak in a flask of whiskey. I, I, they I didn't even it. check <laughs> Tiffany's bag. For those who don't know, Tiffany is uh, Lady is Sip or Lady Sip. Yeah, no, oh, Lady was, Tiff. Lady Tip. Because it's a play on Lady Sip. Uh, yes, you know, uh, or the lady, lady, lady Specter. She, she is Lady Specter and Lady Tip on our uh, podcast. Uh, check out our Black Panther review to hear her yes. debut. And yeah. hear her saying, get the fuck out of my van, I'm trying to go home. It wasn't home. Black Panther, it was Star Wars. Was it Star Wars? Yeah, she yes, was on the yes, list yes, of Black yes, Panther. Yes, yes. No, she wasn't. That's right. But she was still sitting at home saying, get the fuck out of my van, I'm ready to go home. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, uh, wow, I fucked that up. 
<laughs> you did. So, anyways, yeah, no, we had, we had a great time at the convention. Um, so, um, I, um, first thing I want to talk about is some of the stories we heard off mic. We got some interviews, and we're going to announce those here in a second. But we we got to hear some great stories off mic. First, you didn't get shooters on mic, did you? No, I didn't you get that. About that, and, right and now. that may be. Uh, an interview in a future episode. We don't know. We, we may have that lined up for tomorrow. But Try now. just in case, I, I got this wonderful story from Jim Shooter about how the uh, actual wedding of Peter Parker and Mary Jane came about. Mm-hmm. Because apparently there was some convention. It was planned, correct? Like, like no. 10 years in advance, right? You would think. Yes. <laughs> no. Uh, it was absolutely totally out of the blue because at a convention there was a Q&A panel going on and Stan Lee was being asked the question, why Like, why won't you let Peter Parker and Mary Jane tie the knot? Why can't Spider and MJ tie, uh, tie the knot? And uh, he he said, well, that's a much better question uh, for my ch- editor-in-chief. I only kind of do kind of some of the story stuff, but he would be the guy to ask. And so he shoots it off. He throws Jim Shooter under he the bus. He shoots it off, huh? Yeah, he Boom. shoots it off uh, to Jim Shooter and... So essentially, so you know, where does he get off? Where does he, he says, get off? You don't, you don't understand. <laughs> off mic yeah. earlier. Yeah, there's that, a whole thing. Yeah, Wait, I'm saying that. Yeah, but <laughs> so essentially, what you're saying is, Stan threw Jim under the fucking bus. Yes, absolutely. And then drove and, that motherfucker and he's over there and thinking, put it in reverse. I've got drive. thousands of people sitting in this room. I'm not getting out of here alive. If I don't, and uh, I'm quoting him, I'm not getting out of this room alive if I say no. <laughs> and, uh, so, so that is how the uh, wedding between Peter Parker and Mary Jane Watson became a thing. And it's, uh, it's because Stan was like, "Oh no, 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 Jim, yeah. Jim's got your answer for this." Fuck so your question. On the spot, I don't need it. He had to be like, "Uh, <laughs> yeah. yes, they are." Because I value my life. And now, we're not shitting on Stan. Like, it's no, just a no, funny but, thing that happened no, in, like, it, the it's 70s. Not, it's it's pretty hilarious. fucking funny. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like something Stan would do. Like, <laughs> yeah, and right. obviously, not knowing him personally, not ever being able to even meet the man in person. But, like, just being able to see, like, thank God for the internet. Thank yeah. God for, you know, I mean, stuff like that. But being able to see like what the the bits of personality you get to see from Stan, and I'm I'm sure after Jim Shooter was done talking at the convention, Stan said, "And Excelsior!" <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but, but it seems yeah. like a very Stan thing to do. It's like, oh yes, Spider friends, ask Jim, <laughs> ask Jim, He's and Jim's like, up there I... just heavy sweating, <laughs> yeah. like oh, oh no, oh, you did pull it on his collar. Oh, like, oh, damn it! Oh, yes, well. of course they're going to get married. So we we also had uh, and this this was such a pleasure. If we don't get an interview with this guy, I will not be upset because we got no. to talk to a legend. We got to talk to Neil Adams. And can I tell and, his joke here in a minute? Yes, yeah, okay. yes, yes, yes. We got to talk to him for like what a solid fifteen minutes at yes. least. At least. Well, yes. well, well, okay. Well, the thing was, is not only did I get to speak with him two years ago, but. I was standing behind another man in line two years ago who was asking about Jon Stewart. And if, you, if you've if you ever listened to any interview with Neil Adams, he's a storyteller. Not just in the yeah, comics, but yeah. in person, he is a storyteller. He will sit there and talk. Oh, we got that ex- you get him, experience today. You get him on a certain subject, he will talk. Uh, so two years ago, I got to hear him like just passionately talk about Jon Stewart, which originally they were wanting to name like, I don't know. It was essentially go back and listen to one of his first episodes on Fat Man on Batman. Whatever name it was, it was something like something Washington. It was essentially a slave name. Okay. He's like, no, name him John Stewart. Little did I know there was going to be a comedian with the same name. But he like he has he has a true love for John Stewart. Yeah. So I was able to sit there behind a man who was trying to tell me like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm taking up so much time. I'm like, no, no, continue. Just like, get, continue. Yeah. I just, I'm <laughs> sitting there, like, exactly, like, I'm sitting there with, my, <laughs> with my, my, my chin in my hands just, like, gawking at him, just listening to him because he's such a storyteller, even in person. Yes. Whenever we, we were talking with somebody earlier, and I kept looking over at, at Neil, and he had no line. And I was like, you know what? Like, I, I, have, I don't have much money left. I have a few things signed from him from a few years ago. 
I just want to go over there and talk to him. Yeah. Because, like, who knows? Maybe tomorrow, maybe 10, 20, 30 years from now. Well, yeah, and I think... There might be... A, there's going to be a day where we will no longer have I think we were all standing around trying to decide what print to buy. Yes. And then you were like, fuck it. I'm just going to go talk that's to That's exactly him. what I said. Yeah. I said that's, I think that's exact words yeah. in mind. Was there's, he has no line. Fuck it. I just want to go talk to him. And then I, I think we just followed suit. Yes. We were like, you know what? Yeah, I want to yeah. hear that conversation. So, first, first off, I will, I walked up and you know, I, mean, I just expressed to him, like, listen, like, I know I've met you before, but I just want to let you know and you hear it every day. But, like, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for everything that you and Danny O'Neill has done. Like, thank you for everything you personally have done. Like, your art, your storytelling, everything. And there are so but many books. Your damn interviews yeah. on Kevin Smith's podcast or here and there. Never. Like, anywhere I heard, like, just, like, I have such a, a pleasure and enjoyment yeah. just listening to and you. And there are so many stories. stories that he's just done by himself. Like, exactly. art and writing. Yes. Like the yes, whole yes. thing. But just, like, him just talking. Like there, there, there's, there's an episode of Fat Man Batman where he's talking Such about like a... just him growing up on a farm and stuff. Just, just hearing him talking, telling stories is so intriguing. It's so mesmerizing that you can't help but just to sit there and just gawk at him and yeah. just listen. So it, it, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. If anything else, if this man wants to die tomorrow or fifty years from now, like I just want this. I just want another experience where I get to sit and, and he's, listen to Neil. He's Adams. a very quick wit too. He is. Anything God damn it, that say, fucker he, is clever. He can answer. He's that clever too. as hell, and he was giving me shit. <laughs> no yes, one in my yes, life. Yes, no yes. one in my life has talked shit to me, and I'm sitting there still bowing. To this him, like this you are whole... a god. To me, this whole com- convention, Bob was going up to these creators yes. and stuff, My, saying something. I like, have I have two themes of this convention. One of which is, hey, I think I follow that person on Instagram. Or yes. B, I love your story, but I didn't finish it because I didn't get the last issue because Neil, I'm poor. Neil <laughs> did not let him get away. With it. All no. the other creators were the like, coming. Oh, you should totally Superman read Superman coming yeah. of the Superman. Yes, it was a story he's been. It's one of his own personal stories. He's been he's been. That's another for a one while. where that's the only name on the book. Yeah, the coming of the Superman. Yeah. First off, sounds like a cheap porno, which Matt's brother would probably be involved in. And we <laughs> we could sell it. Yes, we could absolutely sell it. And but like he's been talking about the story for years. So whenever the story finally came out, I was fully on board with. Are you taking your pants off? <laughs> Alpha, I'm, I'm loosening my belt. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. I was okay. gonna say, I, I need to put what I need to put shit? Vincent's goggles on, to make sure I'm protected. Yeah, yeah. You know, my brother would take his like you know they bring up Superman and your hand gets tricky. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so as soon as you say Superman, <laughs> Dix comes out. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Dix out for quark. <laughs> All right. But, uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Long story short, I don't even remember what I said. But long yeah. story short, I just wanted to go talk to this man because yeah. like just the experience of being face to face with this man was. Is like, like it sounds generic. Just being in his presence, bucket list yeah. type shit. Just you know being I mean? in For his me, presence. Personally. I like I was on on the fence, given the prices. Mm-hmm. I I wasn't against the prices, and no, which I won't he's a quote here. Legend, dude. Yeah, I won't quote the prices here. If he wanted a hundred dollars per signature, I'd be okay with right. it because you deserve it. But uh, I was I was a little on the fence with the prices. But after being exposed to him and getting to talk to him for a moment, I was sitting there and I was staring at that coming of the Superman book. And I remember you talking about it when it was it's from so issue good. one. And I was like, fuck, I've always wanted to read this. I love Superman, and this is Neil Adams. I, I made the snap decision. I was yeah. like, you know what? Don't care. I'm going to spend this money. I want this book. I don't even care if he signs it. I just want I want to give him this money. But but anything, you buy, anything you buy from him, whether it's a print, comic, hardcover, whatever, yeah. he will sign. He signed so, it. He so personalized if it you were to bring, If you were to bring anything to him, which I did. I have issue one of, super, of coming of Superman on my backpack. Fifty dollars flat out. Yeah, you wind up getting that a full fucking nice hardcover. We'll quote, of a full we'll run. quote this price, this one price, this yeah. one price. Yeah, sixty dollars, which alone yes. on a hardcover is a good fucking price, especially for somebody like him, especially for a story. I think like it's that. it's just but then he cover signed price, it on top of that. Just cover price, I think it's like twenty five thirty dollars. Yeah, yeah. So. Okay, well, so let's just hypothetically say that you paid fifty dollars for a signature, you got the hardcover for ten dollars. Yes. Flat out, sixty dollars for his not only just his signature in this book, but to be able to sit there for, for and experience 10, 15, 20 experience minutes. his presence was 
glorifying. It was. It really and, was. And and we capped it off in a perfect way. Oh my but god. There was, there was just such this perfect way that we let it go. And, okay. And you were the one who called this. So okay. You, well, you tell. Well, the first, joke. it's yeah. like you I mean I wasn't trying to take much of his time because one of the first yeah. things I thought was like, okay, this man first off is a legend. Like, how much of a gold mine would it be if we were able to score a fucking twenty second interview with this man? Right. Just for him to be like. Was it a sort of my podcast? And that's it. Yeah. I would fucking pay money for that. But for the fact that he, like, I just wanted to go up and talk to him. Because like I said, right. who knows if it would be tomorrow or 50 or years from now. There's going to be a day where we don't have a new Adams on this earth. And I exactly. don't want to think about that day. Yeah. So, like, as much as I'm able to, I want that personal experience. Because one of the first things I thought was, like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's go up and see if we can record with you. So as soon as I walked up, I could see just in his eyes and his face, like, I think he might be a little sick right now, like a little under the weather, maybe have a cold or something. You just tell, like, because he had a tissue in his hand and everything, kind of wiping his nose. I'm like, you know what? I, I, I don't, I, I'm not going to ask him because yeah. obviously, like, he might be a little under the weather. I just want to, I just want to be able to experience this, his presence. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I just want to talk to him, and I, and the first thing I did was I, I, I shook his hand. and I want to thank him, like, you know what? Everything you've done, everything you've done, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. I shook his hand and I, I think t- I said that to I every him, creator. Yeah. And I gave time. him a yeah. quick little like, you know what, what you did on this and this and this or whatever. Like, you're a genius. You're you're a great storyteller, whether it's on a podcast or you know, I mean, a, a video interview, comic, whatever. You're a great storyteller. So I was trying to cut it short because I'm like, you know what, this man's kind of he's getting up there in age. Like, yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to waste his time. And then I shook his hand again, trying to leave. And then, like, he would keep talking, and we would keep talking. Yeah. By the third time I shook his hand, he even mentioned something like... I, I saw him. Yeah, he pulled your hand. Yeah, he pulled in me the... in. He pulled me on top of the table. <laughs> Which, by the way, I don't know how old he is. The man's got some strength to him. Yeah. Because, give me your hand. You can't see this on mic, but he was like... <laughs> like, good fucking strength. You know what I mean? Like, I was, like enough where I was like, oh, shit. You know what I mean? And... Uh, yeah, I just almost knocked the whole fucking table over. Yeah. You see that spike in the sound right there? But, uh... I'm gonna I'll, 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 yeah. By the third time I shook his hand, because I'm trying to, like... Although I don't want to leave, I don't want to I don't want to waste his time. You of know course. what I mean? Yeah. And I don't want him to get annoyed. Like, I know I've heard this a million times. But there was... And offensively so. Offensive to, uh, to me, to him, to everyone. Like, yeah. Offensively so. There was nobody lining up for Neil no, fucking Adams. Of, of all people. Yes. Of all fucking people, dude. He should have had a line backed up. Right. You know what I mean? Like, you understand. He should have had a line fucking backed up. And he didn't. Did you have people that were lesser known? It's just sad. Yeah, dude. It, it kind of is. So many people are just so it kind disingenuous. Of is in a way. And yeah. he even mentioned that. It was like, I mean, if you go back and listen to any interviews of his, like, he was one of the pioneers of fucking Comic Cons, dude. He right? was there from the beginning. Yes. And he even said that to us whenever we were talking. But, like, I don't, I was just trying to, like, you know I mean? I, I wasn't trying to waste his time. By the, so, by the third time I shook his hand, he even said something like, how many times is this guy going to shake my hand? And I did this little move where I kind of, I brushed the top of his hand. I'm like, I'm just trying to scrape a little, little bit of your DNA so we could always have a Neil Adams on Earth. Yes. Like, we want more of that. Yeah. So, you know, I told him a quick little story about, uh, there was, I'm not even going to get into it. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, but, I mean, but there was a quick little story that I told him about, was like, I found a little funny about... A, a, a certain circumstance that happened with something I got from him two years ago. Yeah. And he was like, well, as soon as he's done talking about that, I got a funnier story. <laughs> yeah. He didn't, yeah. no, he didn't even, wait. yeah, he, yeah. like, he cut you off he, to he, say, he did. I'm going to tell a funnier I'm going to tell story. something funnier than what he's even about to Give say. Give him a moment to speak, yeah. and then fuck him. I'm going to tell him. Let <laughs> the peasants <laughs> and the common folk speak. The king shall speak afterwards, <laughs> is essentially what it was. It was great. And a very quick synopsis of the joke that he told us was, there's two Quasimodo brothers. Quasimodo, if you don't know, is uh, the hunchback from Notre Dame. Yes. There's two brothers, two Quasimodo brothers. They went to the Notre Dame Cathedral for a job. The first brother was like, hey, let me, essentially, let me, let me ring your bell. Let me ring the bell in the tower. Yeah. So they sent that first brother up. His first day, he rang the bell. The bell came back, hit him in the head, hit him in the face. He fell down the tower, hit the ground, died. Yeah. All the townsfolk came around and said, who is that? And somebody said, I don't know, but his face rings a bell. 
And we laughed. We thought that was the joke. And he said, no, 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 wait. That's not the end. <laughs> it's a good bit for it, though. It really is. He said, no, 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 no. Yeah. That's not the end. The second brother said, well, my brother died. You know, he's doing this job. Let me go up and take over for yeah, him. Right. Let, me, let, me, let me do the job. Let me ring the bell. And they said, okay, go ahead. So the second brother went up, rang the bell. Same thing happened. Hit him in the face. He died. Fell down this tower. Hit the ground. Died. The, the town came around. They said, who is that? Somebody said, I don't know, but he's a dead ringer for that guy. <laughs> I lost it. Dude, I lost it. Between no. that and us talking about wives, and I can't remember what it was he said, but essentially along the lines of, like, his wife calls the shots. And I want to say something like, well, don't they all? Like, all yeah. of our wives call the shots. And he, yeah. would, and he, he was dropping an F-bomb. And like, who the fuck are you talking about? We. I, I mean, and pretty much like, I do my own shit. You know what I mean? Like, my wife, and then he stopped mid sentence and goes, Wait, she's not coming, is she? She's not around, is she? No, she's not. Okay, yeah. Yeah, what do you fucking mean, yeah. we? Dude, uh, it was such that a kind of great stuff. Experience. The fact that he cracked on me that I didn't finish coming with Superman, and he kept hiding that last that last page of coming with Superman to me. Yeah. And then him. You know, yeah, joking yeah, yeah, about yeah, his yeah, wife. Yeah. When, when I bought this issue, uh, the this uh, hardcover, he he was like, "Okay, come here." And he had me and Alpha Spectre come around the table. Yes. He was like, "Come look at this." And we read it. And we, were, Dude, we kept looking up at Bob, and we were like, oh, "And I was shit. arched at like a fucking twenty degree yeah. angle." You were trying, trying to, see to say it, but he was not letting you. I missed the last issue of this fucking story arc. Yeah. The whole story. I read the whole thing besides the finale, but. Uh, Neo being the class act that he is, he eventually let you see it and shit. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, real quick, since we're on Neo and says Matt hasn't talked a lot, Matt has a, a quick little story about. Neo oh, really? Well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Although, yeah, well, <laughs> Neil being ever the uh, comedian that he is, uh, we walk up and uh, and I'm looking at the, the third issue of Hammer the the run that is this kind of like they moved it all into an omnibus and just, they just broke it out. Okay. So I have two, you know, issue one and two of that, and was looking at the third, and so he uh, went into, a, you know, this is a book; it has words. It might not have very many, <laughs> many pictures, but uh, you know, they still they still do these things where you read and sounds about what he would say, <laughs> yeah, for sure. And so you know, it was his uh, his sell it, trying to get me to buy this book, and you know, fun to hear you know his comedy and his you know, candor with you. Yeah, and and the fact that he drops the f bomb. The fact that he'll start cuss along, but he's also at the same time like. Are we allowed to? Are we allowed to like drop that? I don't are know. We like, allowed personally. Yeah. Do we say fuck all the time? Well, no. I mean, like, are we allowed to like be like Neil says fuck? Oh, he don't give a fuck. Dude. Okay. And, cool. If they listen to Fat Man on Batman and everything, he cusses on that. All he right. All right. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. I was just a little concerned, just a little bit. Concerned. I just personally, especially on our podcast, I try not to say. fuck. Fuck so much because like you fucking try. Well, I you fucking, fucking try, try, but I fucking fail. But you fucking fail, and it all gets fucked up in the end. Fuck so, it. Fuck it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, real quick, before we go into the last little bit of this, oh, it, come Matt, on, Bob. Matt, is there anything that you want to talk about? Any, yeah. What, any, what were your, your experiences? experiences? Yeah. yeah. Like th- this whole the whole point of you having you on this right now is kind of a make up for uh, right, right. for you my reaction on, so right like, there was I thought Bob had another 20 minute story to no, tell no 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 <laughs> I, I want to try to give Matt a little bit of mic time yeah of that. course yeah, yeah. I, I enjoy coming to the con uh, two years ago I uh, had to find another con uh, you know I, yeah. yes yeah. we we went through and, and just wasn't really seeing anything that I wanted so made a split decision to go check out Inner Geek which we have at home and you know, I mean, just, just kind of, yeah. <laughs> which we love the inner geek. Oh, yeah. oh by, by all means, inner yeah. geek is our, 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 our go to LCS. I wish and, we were sponsored. <laughs> and and <laughs> honestly, and Matt was like, I'm going to go to inner geek. And I'm like, bro, I go to, I can go to inner geek anytime. And this but I just had a feeling, you know what I mean? So I go in and I'm looking through and I find, you know, this, this dollar fucker. issue and it's signed and, 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 Really freaked out the, the people at Energy because you know this wasn't supposed to be in a box. Yeah, they weren't going to sell it to me. I'm God like, dude, it's in there. It says a dollar. It's mine. So one of my <laughs> yeah. favorite Batman artists because like I'm a big fan of the long years Batman. Yeah, and like the kind of slightly over the top the like, like visualistic like three. You know I mean, yeah, the Nightfall Batman. Yes, Kelly Jones. This motherfucker. Found a signed Kelly Jones Batman cover for a goddamn dollar. Well, Bob, you're just gonna have to get on your knees and 
pray that he gives it to you. Oh, I always <laughs> get on my knees and open my mouth good and wide and relax my throat to say a prayer for <laughs> Matthew to give me this. Well, I have, uh, you, know, you guys haven't got to hear me, but I have an unnatural Are you obsession. With, choked up on this, Matthew? With, yeah, with Joker. I mean, I'm just I'm yeah. a huge Joker fan. Are you... Gagging on your words. Which, by the way, the the uh, the the print that we have for you, it's done. It's signed. Yeah, we're gonna get it. To what you. it is? I was we, really at the point where I was gonna hold you know Vinny's brother hostage. I was gonna duct tape him. <laughs> well, well what it is, like, Doctor Tino hostage. It's been it's been a plan from the beginning that we're gonna hold it off for about a year and a half. So the anticipation grows so much that when you finally get it. <laughs> It could be literally a picture of someone's turd in a toilet. It's a like, very long story. This line. is art. Yes. Uh, yeah, well, it's in Shanghai right now. Don't worry. It'll be yes. in soon. But, uh, okay, so we did get a few interviews, and uh, you guys are going to love this. Like, uh, honestly, if you love comics the way that we love comics, you should love these interviews. Because we we actually kind of got to some of our heroes. Yes. Our personal, oh, individual absolutely. heroes. And uh, we're going to go ahead and start this off with our Peter J. Tomasi interview. And uh, that that was mine. I, I uh, sat down and talked to him real quick. And uh, I, uh, you guys know I love the Superman book. I'm talking to the people here in the room. Maybe the people on the podcast. Maybe the illustrious 10. Maybe, maybe 11, 11 by now. Give us a quick little uh, rundown of what is Peter J. Tomasi has. Uh, what has he created? What is he, he created? Well, I mean, he's Superman. done so much from Nightwing. Uh, he's done Green Lantern Corps. Was he he was. It? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, you're gonna hear me fuck up here in a little bit. I uh, instead of editor, okay, in all I of say, our defenses, yeah, we were very Vin- nervous. Vincent talked to somebody who who has who has contributed so much to one of his favorite heroes. Yes, I talked to someone who has contributed so much to my favorite heroes, and as long and along with Alpha Spectre. Has talked to somebody who's contributed to his hero. Yes. So yes, we're going to fucking fangirl a little so bit. Instead we're going to stutter a little bit. We're going to fucking be excited and fuck things up. So instead of saying writer and editor, I said writer and director. <laughs> because so honestly, if they made a movie, you would direct it. Yeah, I would. I would watch it. Uh, Peter Tomasi, he has done Peter what? Peter Tomasi, he has done uh, Nightwing, uh, Green Lantern Corps. He did um, Batman and Robin. Batman and Robin. Robin Brightest, Brightest Day, Day. Brightest Day. Uh, House of Penance. Well, he helped with uh, some of the side stories in Blast. House of uh, Penance, which came House out from uh, Dark Horse, which is about the Winchester House, which apparently yes. he's, he's a bit passionate he is about. He's not a fan of the uh, He's not he a fan, not of, the a fan of the movie. movie. Uh, and, of course, Super Sons and Superman, which yes. many people know. And uh, you're going to hear that, and uh, we had a great time. To- I-, I-, I had a great time talking to him. So here's that interview right now. All right, I'm sitting here with uh, DC Comics writer and director of titles like Batman and Robin, Brightest Day, Green Lantern Corps, Super Sons, Superman, too many to mention. Light Brigade, creator <laughs> own, The Mighty, creator own, House of Penance, creator own, and uh, coming out April 17th, The Bridge. And I would like to ask you about that here soon, too. I definitely have a note for that one. Um, First thing I'd like to ask you is, how did you get your start in comics, and what brought you to D.C.? Uh, Very easy, actually. I sent uh, a letter back in 93, or was it 92, Um, seeing if uh, they wanted to look at my scripts. They were kind enough to actually look at them, and I got some feedback on them. Um, They were looking for assistance. I went in for a job as an assistant editor. And I got it. And uh, <laughs> yeah. it was weird. It was very weird. Very smooth story yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah, pretty easy. And then cut to 2018. Yeah. Well, with 25 years with DC, what would you say is your favorite story that you've worked on? Oh, there's been a couple. I can't honestly, from Green Lantern with Jeff Johns to Kingdom yeah. Come as an assistant editor with Wade and Alex Ross. Uh, yeah, definitely a fan of Alex Ross yeah, wearing a yeah, shirt today. Yeah, the shirt there. Yeah. yeah, there's just so many, but those those two pop up. Um, yeah, and those are great stories. Yeah, but I love that Green Lantern Corps run. Uh, the next thing I'd like to ask you is, um, uh, you once said that your son was the inspiration for writing Damian Wayne. Yep. Uh, have you had any similar inspirations when writing uh, Jonathan Kent? Uh, yeah, because... Uh, 
as you as people with kids know, there's the angel and devil and every kid and <laughs> yeah. all of us too actually. So I've seen both. So more of the uh, angelic John comes out. That's out. That's my son at some points, and the craziness of Damien also comes out. I've so got a twelve-year-old myself, so I, I could definitely. Yep. So uh, my guy's fifteen now, but uh, he's easily uh, <laughs> adaptable into a lot of cool stuff in the, in the comics. Oh, uh, now what drew you to Superman specifically, and uh, why are you leaving the book? Uh, what drew me was it was you know the flagship character. I mean, I got it. They said you know we want you to take over, and oh, they uh, they came to you. Yep, and oh, I great. said absolutely. So oh, yeah. uh, then me and Pat just, uh, after having a little sabbatical from each other on Batman and Robin, uh, teamed up again. And uh, we've been, uh, I think, working our magic. I hate to you know, sound like my head's been a little blown up. But I, a lot I of can people, tell you firsthand, I'm loving it. <laughs> a lot of people seem to be enjoying the book. And yeah. uh, we've had a lot of fun bringing it to readers and just pouring our hearts into it. And uh, it's, uh, it's been a pleasure. So, What do you think of uh, Bendis taking over the book? Oh, it's, I look forward to seeing what he brings to it. You know, it'll be, it should be uh, it should be interesting, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll I'm sure he's got a lot of great stuff up his sleeve. Yeah, well, it's Bendis. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and a little bit of an oddball question for you: What is your favorite Marvel character? Oh, my favorite Marvel character. I would have to say, I'd have to say it's probably, ooh, it's tough, but I would say, I have to say Spider-Man first. Spider-Man? Yeah. I'm, I'm a big Spidey fan myself. Yeah. Uh, now tell us a little bit about The Bridge and uh, what that's all about. Uh, the Bridge coming out on April 17th from uh, Abrams. It's on Amazon. You can check it out there to pre-order it if you want. Uh, it's about the building of the Brooklyn Bridge and about uh, Washington and Emily Roebling, a husband and wife who... Uh, under an amazing circumstances and incredible gauntlets and troubles and all the stuff that you can imagine going up against them, building this really what it is, it was a moonshot in 1883. It was like going to the moon except they were building a bridge. <laughs> and it's uh, an amazing American story about willpower and fear and courage and, and just going up against the odds to create something out of nothing, and it's wow. uh, it's an amazing amazing story that, that a lot of people should know about. Yeah. Uh, well, I want to thank you for having this interview with me, my and pleasure. I wanted to tell you personally, my first book ever reading was Superman. Uh, poor kid, I had to go to the local video game store, and they would sell them there. I'd have to buy some candy and stuff. Right. So. For you to take this character and bring him back to the levels that I knew him as a kid from the animated series and uh, the mullet days right, and everything, right. it's just been so heartwarming. Uh, I, I love issue you. 7, issue 39, almost brought me to tears. Thank you. It's just beautiful. Uh, well, I appreciate the kind words on it. We, we're, we're, we're glad we've got such a great response from everybody. So Yeah, it's it's my favorite book right oh, now. I'm sad you. to see you leave. Thank you very uh, much. Thank you very much for sitting down to do this with me. And uh, no, I'm going to have some books for you. <laughs> sure, no problem. I'll be sitting here right here, Wade. Yeah, uh, so there you have it. Uh, a little bit of uh, Peter's background. Uh, that how was got pretty fucking comes. awesome. It was kind of a, a smooth transition, really, for him. So, yeah. uh, granted, granted, like, a fairly short, but, like, quality over quantity. We yes. got we got to hear from somebody that is a well, big name right now, well, like, especially right now. Like you heard in the interview, they came to him for Superman. Yeah, they wanted him for a Superman. He didn't go like, oh, I want to do the Superman book. So, uh, yeah, they came to him and they they chose correctly DC Comics. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and move on to Bob's interview. For the for this convention, uh, okay. one probably one of the greatest Batman artists of all time, uh, Greg Capullo. 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 I told I you I was gonna it. fucking correct you on Mike, bro. I, I said it. I said it very confidently too, because I, I thought I had it right. Hey, in your defense, I've been saying Mark Millar for years until we all yeah. find out it's just Miller. Well, flat out. Well, no, I uh, not that I have no idea. You guys have been correcting yeah, me all day, so yeah. <laughs> no, but y y we're we're all creatures of habit. Yes, you know, and you have to get set something. It's how it is. So we've got we've got the Greg Capullo 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 uh, interview coming up here. And uh, Bob, do you want to say anything before we go into this? Okay, real quick. Uh, first off, I gotta thank Mr. Alpha Spectre here because first off, like he's a huge Spawn fan. Yes, and mm -hmm. so he he understands how much 
Greg has has contributed to the comic industry on just that title. Mm-hmm. Not even counting, not even counting the definitive, the the iconic run yeah. of Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo well, on Batman. And 52. when I was talking to him when I was getting my book signed, that's what I told him. I was like, yes, Scott Snyder crafted a, a brilliant story, but the, the idea of comics is that it's told through a visual medium. Yes. And... You you brought this to and, life. And you, I, you gave this to And us. you'll hear here just a, just a minute or two that I even tell him, like, you guys are on the same level as Neil Adams and, and Denny O'Neill. Yes. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, you guys are like peanut butter and women. 10 to 20 it's, years from now, people like, are going to be talking like, about this like, scene. Yes. Like they're, they're, they're I'll, I'll, obviously, thing. Alan Grant's killing joke kind of gave Joker that, like, really sadistic feel. The but like the lambs. death of the family, yeah, a Silence of the Lambs. Like, yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. He had a very Hannibal esque, Hannibal, yeah. Hannibal Lecter esque feeling to him. Well, yeah, you get that Super Saiyan feeling finally, and, yeah. and and that's the thing. In in Death of the Family, you're like you're kind of on the fence. Like, is he fucking nuts, or is he the only one that's? And sane? then in Endgame, which I got signed by him, even you better. don't know, you don't no. know if the Joker is really like. 70 years, years old. Not. Like, uh, yes, he, is he, he timeless he, or not? He, yeah. he, he, he makes you question on, like, is he as old as he was? He make, what, he makes you think? Or is he just some regular fucking dude? Is, you know is he mean? just fucking with Batman's head again? So yeah. so I was trying to explain to, to Greg, like, yes, you may look at yourself like a regular dude, but, like, the rest of us, you're a fucking icon. Yes. And not only just on Batman, not only on just Spawn, but, like, him and Mark Miller on Reborn. Yeah. And on 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 uh, Quasar and fucking sure. so in X Force and everything else he's been on, dude. He his art is yeah. is very and you and you say this in the interview. Yes. So let's let's so go let's ahead and for that. We'll, we'll jump uh, right and real quick, right before we jump into that, uh, uh, while, real quick, real while quick. while we're interviewing, uh, Brandon, keep in mind we're in the middle of a convention. We're mm-hmm. we're in his booth. So there's an intercom yes. that announces things. Uh, there's twice, right at the beginning and about midway through, where there might seem like uh, we're kind of rehashing things that we just talked about. Is because they were announcing things. We paused, yeah. went back to. Um, if there's an odd cut, it's all. If, in the if it feels a little yeah. like almost it was paused and picked back up because that's exactly what it was. Yeah. Because we're trying to. Trying to trying to ensure the quality for you guys. So we're gonna go um, ahead and bring that interview yes. to and, right now. And before we go, oh, right there, God. I just want to say, <laughs> fuck we'll you. Just put his I just want to say, table. Greg Capullo, oh, okay. stand up, fucking guy. Thank you so much. Yes. And well, thank you to all of them. Like right? exactly. everyone who but, sat down with us. But yeah. Greg seemed like he was completely cool with doing this. Seemed yeah. happy about it. So he was a great guy. Here we go. Here he is. Here it is. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, this is Bob with Sort of My Podcast, and I'm sitting here with the incredible Greg Capullo. You know him from uh, the the definitive run of Batman on the New Fifty Two. You know him from uh, him and Mark Miller's Reborn. Uh, not to mention shit like Spawn and the new Dark Knight's Metal. Uh, we're gonna try to sit down and have a few questions here with him. And uh, how you doing today, Greg? Doing great, Bob. Uh, the first thing I want to ask you is, uh, what 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 drew you into uh, starting to start starting to draw, and what drew you into the comic industry? Well, I mean, uh, you know, my mother showed me a drawing that she had of me uh, of Batman Robin that I did at four years old. So, wow. you know, just always an interest. And mm-hmm. uh, and then by the time I was eight years old, I just wanted to draw superhero comics. It was it was like I knew I wanted to draw because I used to also collect Mad Magazine. So I, I knew I wanted yeah. to either draw Mad Magazine, draw for Mad Magazine. Or draw superhero comics at eight years old. I just go, oh, that's what I want to do. So, uh, you know, when I was in high school, you know, I kind of messed that up a little bit because I was always drawing my heroes like straight F's in algebra, right? The algebra <laughs> test would come through. I'd turn them over, draw Captain America or Conan, you know, and uh, and but then I'd get the report card. Back then, you know, it wasn't electronic. They mailed mm-hmm. it to you. So yeah, yeah, I'm an artist, right? So I'd get F's. I'd turn the F's into B's. I just, <laughs> I just, you know. And so then we get, we, my mother would read these, you know, get the, the the report card. It's got all B's, and then a comment that basically said, "Greg is the majorest fuck off we've ever seen in class." And she'd say, "Now you see that? 
as much of a fuck up as you are, you still got B's. If you only would apply yourself, <laughs> you know, <laughs> little you, did you, you know, you would get A's. But uh, I never used algebra, and uh, anyway, so it's always been in my blood. It's just something I knew I wanted to do in my life. Awesome, awesome. Um, have you? What's your favorite character so far that you've liked, either drawing or what would you like to draw? Uh, well, I could ask that quite a bit, and, and you know, mm. the deal is this, man. I mean. Uh, as I said, I wanted to do it since I was a little kid. So yeah. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for everything I've done. I've mm-hmm. had a good time, you know, doing my first full time book, Quasar at Marvel. Yes. Then I got X Force. That was completely sweet. Work with Todd on Spawn. That was amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, so, I mean, just everything's been great. Everything's been fun. You know, uh, all, all of it's equal to me. And uh, and what do I want to do next? Everything. <laughs> yes. um, and uh, is, there, is there any specific character or story that you've been interested in that you haven't quite had the chance to uh, work with yet? Well, again, you know, that, that applies to the everything, you know, yeah. because, I mean, growing up, I mean, you, you know, you collect comics, or, and, and it's just like there's so many great characters to do. You want to, you know, touch a zillion of them, right? But I only got one life, and a penciler can't spread out like a, like a writer can. A writer can, like, write two, three books a month, whatever. Mm-hmm. And, you know, a guy like me is locked in for extended periods of time so I don't know what I'd like to do next I know I want to finish up the creeps next yeah. I know uh, you know DC has some ideas for me after the next project with uh, Scott on uh, black label uh, imprint so mm-hmm. who knows who knows where I'll go you know or even uh, even a, a specific writer that you haven't got a chance to work with is there anybody that well even if, if I name anybody Scott will like going to a corner <laughs> sucking his thumb crying you, know, yeah, you, you, <laughs> don't, you don't want to make him sad no 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 because no. actually uh, uh, one of the guys we do a podcast with he's a big uh, Kyle Higgins fan and he was talking to Kyle just a little bit ago he's like you you and Greg should hook up and you know, maybe, yeah, yeah. maybe maybe do something he's like well you gotta talk to Greg about that one yeah, yeah. Um, Scott's really jealous man <laughs> yeah, I understand I understand um, uh, do you read comics now, or were you reading any comics growing up? And if so, uh, what well, were some I, of your favorite yeah, ones? Yeah, I, I read shitloads of comics, yeah. you know, growing up. Mo- mostly Marvel, to be honest. Sorry, DC, but that's true. Yeah. And uh, but uh, since I've been drawing comics, I mean, you know, you're so busy drawing them all the time. Yeah, you, you know, kind of you're I, too busy to do yeah, anything yeah, else. Yeah, I'm yeah. really too busy to, to get involved with reading them. I mean, like, I want to catch up when I when I slow down, you know, because mm-hmm. I still like them a lot, you know. And uh, but the, the the upside of me not looking into comics now is because. I don't see what other artists are doing, so I'm not either lifting from them, you know what I mean? I'm not yeah, stealing yeah. their style. I'm, oh, you know, so it's, and I'm not getting intimidated by what else out there, you know, you know, oh, wow, that's great, man. You know, I don't know if I could do something that great, you know, so it's kind of good that I live in my little bubble. I, I just focus on what I'm doing, and I'll get back into comics when I slow down a bit. And what you're focusing on has been fantastic. <laughs> Thanks, man. Um, We've kind of talked about this a little bit ago off off mic, but uh, is there anything that you can tell us about uh, about uh, last night on Earth or even uh, maybe Swamp Thing or anything that anything that you're allowed to talk about? Obviously. Right, right, right. Well, I mean, you know, you've probably seen some of the press stuff. I mean, you got you know Batman walking around with Joker's head in a in, in a in a jar. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah that's pretty much. Awesome. Awesome. I mean, so what more can I say to that? That's awesome, right? So that just gives you kind of a, a, a little window into the madness that we're going to be going into. So. It's going to be completely awesome. You know, it's, it's Snyder, I keep telling him, you know, he, he always wants to top himself. And I go, you know that's a losing game, right? I go, you're never going to, you can't keep that game up, that pace up. You're going to burn yourself out, whatever. But so far, you know, he keeps topping himself. And I think yeah, this will so- be probably the greatest thing, you know, uh, that we've done again so far. So who knows? And, and I think just about anybody else would agree that you and Snyder together are a dream team. Just right along the lines of Neil Adams and Denny O'Neill. I know, I mean, you personally might not think that, but from an outside point of view, from people that are, are hardcore fans of you, we, we see it. That's why we were so happy to see you guys back together for Dark Knight's Metal. Yeah, um, it, it's crazy. I mean, I, I do hear it a lot, you know, and it's just like a, you, you wonder what, what it is, you know, that's drawing that reaction because, there's, you know, there's so many great creators and uh, so many great teams that have come and gone and been before. Mm-hmm. And, as, as I was saying, you know, you know I've heard that which is very, you know, hell of a compliment, yeah. considering how many great teams there have been and are now and that will be in the future. And, and you just, I wonder, you know, what, what is it about us that people see? And I'll, I probably never know the answer to that. I'm just grateful that people dig it. You know, that's it. I think what it is is that you have such a unique. Unique style, but it flows well with so many different things. Uh, it's, it's like whenever you run on Spawn, like the grittiness, especially with the uh, with the Violator. Yeah. Something about you and clowns, man. Something yeah. about you and clowns is a great thing. But like I said, with with you working with Mark Miller on Reborn, 
I mean, there wasn't a whole lot of uh, like gruesomeness in that, but it right. still worked perfectly. Right. But I think what it is 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 Snyder's Snyder's great storytelling and your fantastic art together. It it blends so well. well thank uh, you. Speaking of Snyder, um, what was it like whenever you guys first got together? I know some of this is out there in the world. I know <laughs> yeah. you guys bumped heads, but uh, what was that experience like for you guys? Well, I mean, you know, he, I didn't know it at the time, but he confessed to me that he was ready to march in there and go, "Hey, it's either him or me." Knowing that they'd bounce him instead of me, because I've been around a little longer. But, yeah. uh, and for me, it was just like he was just some young kid who was uh, just wanting too much control. Because you know, uh, being trained as I was back in the day at Marvel Comics, it was everything's done with like a you know four to six page plot, and and the artist unraveled that, and and, and then the writer it went back to the writer, and he stripped it after. And here was Scott, you know, everything broke it down, you know, and it's like, you know, kid, I need room, you know. Just, yeah. You know, and I used to try and tell him, you know, you're not getting paid by the word. So just, you know, <laughs> you know, exactly. take it easy. Go bounce the kid on your knee or something like that. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, as he saw that, you know, what I was doing with uh, his scripts and stuff, he relaxed. And then he saw, wow, you know, Greg maybe knows a thing or two about this stuff. So now he just stays out of my way totally. And it's a great relationship, you know. Yeah. And like I said, obviously you guys blend so well. Um, one of the last things I want to ask about, uh, what's your thoughts on Reborn becoming a show for Netflix? Well, you know, we all like money, right? So, oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a funny story. Right? When, when Mark uh, approached me to do something, he didn't tell me what it was. Yeah. And, uh, and I go, I'm in. And, and my wife's like, what's it about? I go, I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's Mark Miller. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a good chance it'll become a movie or something, mm-hmm. right? And who doesn't want that to happen, right? So uh, I go, I don't care if it's Broccoli Man fights Turd Guy. I just I would draw the living shit out of that. And, uh, and, and so yeah, obviously when Netflix uh, picked it up, you know, uh, that's the big home run that, you know, everybody is hoping for. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's amazing. You know, now let, let me see you do something with it. I, I, I'm thinking it'd be better to do it like as an ongoing series oh, instead yeah. of like a movie because just the, the story lends itself. Yeah. You know? and, it, and it gives you so much more room to tell that story and flesh it out a bit more than an hour and a half, two hour long movie. Agree, agree. Um, all right, uh, I think that'll just about do it. Is there anything you want to plug or promote before we get off here? No, man, I just want to say thank you to you and, yeah. uh, and to all the fans, you know, who continue to support my career because, you know, uh, without them uh, and without you, there is no me. So I'm grateful for every one of you. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Fulo. It's been a pleasure and it's been a dream to finally meet you <laughs> and sit down with you for a few minutes. And, uh, hell, keep up the good work, man. Thanks, Bob. Thank I'll you do very it. much. All right. And, uh, nice. wow. Yeah, that was, that was really great. Uh, well, just the enveloping stories he had to tell. Yeah. He seems like the kind of guy that you would meet up with at a bar just to exchange stories with. Stand up, dude. Flat out. He's just a great guy. Always welcome on the show. Well, like, I mean, I hope he hears this. I, I slid him the, the flyer. And, so. like, I don't mean to, like, float my own boat or anything, but, like, he tweeted about me. Yes! I yeah. online. You are and trending on I'm, Twitter. I'm kind of trending on Twitter on Capullo's fucking thing. So, like, I'm, I'm just... I'm famous, I'm, bitches. You want to you wanna autograph? I'm just green with jealous rage right now, to quote Hot Rod. <laughs> uh, um, Odell, you met one of your idols You today. did, yes. I did. You talked that about was... some dick, didn't you? Uh, mm. We got deep in with some dick. Ooh, we got deep with dick, huh? <laughs> so so I, I got to interview with one of the guys who actually did pull me back into comics with his run of Nightwing in the New 52, and that's Kyle Higgins. And not even Nightwing. Batman Gates of Gotham. Yes, that is, was. Oh god, that, that was, was that story. was him and Snyder. Yeah, and great, great combo. And just like talking to him, he he's currently working on Power Rangers. Mm-hmm. Uh, with they've got a big yep. event coming yep. up. Yep. Uh, he actually just did another Nightwing story, uh, Nightwing: The New Order, and it's kind of a, a dystopian future Elseworld s Nightwing story. Um, he went from Batman Infernal, which actually involves Superman quite a bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, there's he has a, a couple of um, like he's working on the new Magus robot fighter, he's got his own uh, Hadrian, and I love that like off uh, mic. I refer, I, I told him, I was like, you know, this man here pointing to you, I was like, it got me to read Gates of Gotham. Fantastic story, but the whole fact that that story ties into so much that's even still going on, including metal, 
fantastic idea. And he was like, yeah, that's why I did it. Like, he knew <laughs> he knew that what he set years ago was going to play out in the future. Yeah. And it so, does. And, and it's such a good That just way. sounds genius. Yeah. Bro, he... Um, if you go back and listen to my interview with Capullo, I brought up Higgins. Yeah. <laughs> and he, you know, he, he commented on it, dude. That's a, that's a team of I want to see as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But, like, we get into some con- some talk about, like, his early years. He actually... Uh, well, uh, what the, like, why, don't we, why don't we let the interview Yeah, instead of you telling us, yeah, how about we have this with Higgins tell us? Well, here it is. So, first of all, I want to thank you for doing this with me. Like I said, huge fan. You're one of the things that got me back into comics after quite a few years of not reading. Uh, First thing I kind of want to ask is, what were some of your favorite comics reading growing up? Comics that got me into comics. Uh, I remember, well, I kind of found comics through superheroes, like most people seem to at a young age. And the superheroes that I first kind of discovered were Batman and the X-Men. Um, you know, the Richard Donner's uh, cut of Superman, or Richard Donner's version of Superman, Tim Burton's version of Batman, the animated series, X-Men in the animated series. It was, it was all that. Um, I was aware of comic books through my uncle, and I, rem- I think probably the first issue I ended up actually, that I remember having was an issue of Mark Waid's Flash Run. But it was it wasn't until uh, some friends of, a friend of mine turned me on to some Spider Man issues that I started collecting books. So it was like it was Spider Man during the, during the clone stuff. Weirdly enough, okay. early clone stuff before he became the Scarlet Spider. Okay. Uh, and then it was um, it was a lot like Batman books. Uh, it was mostly Marvel stuff. Like there were hardcover like collections of. Uh, amazing fantasy number 15 at my school library, stuff like that. I mean, I wish my library would have had that stuff. There were CD-ROMs, actually, that Marvel put out, too. I used to find at Toys R Us that had old, like, pan and scans with music and stuff. And and linkability to other, like, anytime there was an editor caption of, like, see this issue, if you clicked on it, it would load that issue. Oh, cool. It was really cool. Um, So I read a bunch of old Marvel stuff that way. And then there were novels that were coming out, like Diane Duane wrote a, an amazing book called uh, the, Venom, the Venom Factor, The Venom Fake fi- uh, Faction, I can't remember, but it was Spider-Man, Venom, uh, the Hobgoblin, uh, it was great. Christopher uh, Golden wrote some, some awesome X-Men, oh, yeah. Daredevil novels. <laughs> and then I started collecting monthly with uh, Nightwing, Chuck Dixon, Scott McDaniel's Nightwing series, that was my book. Okay, uh, so with that being one of the first ones you collect, like, did you collect, did you get the whole run of it, or? Yeah, it was early enough in the run where the number was so low that I was able to track down previous issues. I think I started at, like, issue either 14 or 16, um, okay. and I was like, oh, there have only been 16 issues of this, and I went back and found the earlier ones and pieced together the story, and so it didn't feel daunting to jump on and actually find one book every single month right prior to that all the spider-man stuff of that era was like there were four titles and part one would be in one title and part two would be in another title and i wasn't shopping at comic book stores yet so finding them at a grocery store yeah was like that was the only way um to, to track them down for me right and it was tough i would read stuff out of order all the time and i never had any semblance of kind of continuity over over the titles right so, so Nightwing being like one of your first monthly collections, is that what pushed you into wanting to write? No, I never wanted to write comic books. Really? No. I, I've always written uh, without realizing it um, so that I could direct. I was making movies since the time I was seven. At one point, I decided I was going to, I wanted to be a comic book artist. Uh, and so I kind of like had a, tried a few panels, you know, and that never it, I never finished anything. Like I did sketch, or I did like pinups. I did a lot of like drawing from other people's drawings, sort of thing. Um, but uh, but writing to me was something that was never even in the realm of possibility because I felt like I didn't have a solid enough understanding of the way the world works to really be able to add anything to it. Right. Um, but again. Uh, 
having written without realizing I was writing is something that I guess was always going on in my life. And then uh, it really wasn't until I did the superhero film, The League, that uh, an opportunity presented itself. Joe Quesada saw it and asked if he could ever do anything to help me out because he liked the movie so much. And I said, well, if you're ever looking for new writers, and he said, we're always looking for new writers, and I wasn't going to pass an opportunity like that up. Right. So I pitched to Marvel for a year, figured I'd see what happens, and it kind of turned into a career. Then The League is what the Cowboys Cows... Yeah, okay. Because yeah. I was doing a little bit of research and found that, and now... And you've got another short film coming up? Yeah, I have a film called The Shadow Hours that I wrote and directed that's going to be coming out uh, through IGN. It's gonna, it's gonna, uh, we're going to do a big panel and screening with IGN at WonderCon on March 25th. And then on March 26th, Monday morning, it's going to go live on IGN's website. For anyone oh, to watch. I can't so, wait for that. Be able to check it out, yep. Uh, so... What's what's next? Like you, I know you've got. You. Well, I know you've got like Shattered Grid coming up. Yep, I've and Shattered all that. Grid. I have a new image book called The Dead Hands coming out um, April eleventh, uh, I believe, and that's the next big creator on for me. Okay. And then things with Shadow Hours and some other stuff that I can't even hint at yet. I totally understand yeah. that. So earlier we were kind of talking about your. Hadrian as well as your first creator round, right? No, Cal was. Cal. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, and Hadrian as well kind of became a little bit personal for you, which I feel adds more of a, a meaning to the book. Yeah, absolutely. And so do you feel that some other writers just write to write and lack that kind of connection to their material? Well, I wouldn't... I wouldn't um... I wouldn't presume to question or, or or talk about another writer's like connection to the work that they're doing. Um, I just know that we as creators are we are um, we are hired and we are read uh, because uh, because of our filter, the way that we are able to filter and process both external as well as internal um, issues, uh, whether they be relationships or they be, um, you know, uh, things happening in the world. Each writer is kind of their own lens, and we're paid for processing, essentially, or we're read for the way we process things. Um, So I think every writer has a personal connection because you have to. I mean, that's... Otherwise, you have no voice. Right. Well, uh, I don't want to keep you any longer than I already have. Uh, again, thank you for this interview. I yep. really appreciate it. Yep. And uh, I can't wait to see the film when it comes out. Thanks. Take care. You too. Awesome. Just so, awesome. Yeah. Who knew he never wanted to write comics? <laughs> knew. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, I, 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 I don't know if you can find it on YouTube, but I'd like to find The League. I want to, I, I want to say, actually be yeah. able to sit down and watch that. Yeah. Uh, I can't wait for mm. for his new one to come out. I can't wait for his new one to come out after uh, the con. Yes. Yeah. 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 So hell, just just alone, us three today, we each talk to like three of the people that big are contributing comments. like big things. Some, to of, some our of our favorite, favorite characters. Some of our favorite creators. Uh, like I, I and at the end, of, you heard him in the end of my mm-hmm. interview. I told Tomasi, I was like, look, I was a poor kid who got to go around the the corner and pay a little bit of money for some candy, and I would walk around the store reading comics, mm-hmm. and Superman was my first. Yeah. And at that same time, you know, like the animated series was going, and so for you to yeah. bring Superman back to this oh, level, it was just huge for me to, to talk I, to someone um, who, who brought back my hero in a time when I need a hero. The issue that he was talking about off mic, about he wishes that he was able to distribute to to, to uh, hospitals. Yes, Superman like, number thirty nine. Just hearing, yes. like I'm standing on the side watching you yeah. guys talking about this. I haven't read that issue. 
Yeah, you know what I mean? I don't know what that issue is I'll about. loan it to you for sure. But just hearing his passion on, like, I wish I was able to just well, pass those was, out to hospitals. It was hospitals. such a beautiful... It, it was about kids with cancer, yes. and, and basically was, Superman brings them up to the Justice yeah. League Watchtower to hang out with and, all the and, heroes. And he was talking about what, what, what gave him inspiration for that issue was seeing a commercial. Yes. A commercial about... Uh, I can't remember what organization organization it was. You know what I think I'm gonna do? You know what I think I'm gonna do? Uh, I think I'm gonna take that signed issue that we had. I think I'm gonna fucking auction it off. That's that's my only God copy of thirty nine. I'm gonna auction it off, and we're gonna go ahead and donate to a children's hospital. To a children's hospital, uh, maybe something here in Ohio, because that's where we're it's based. Cincinnati and children's hospital. And yes. you know what? We, all, good we, we yes. could throw in some other stuff too. You know, what I mean, my wife makes a lot of like bows. I mean, she can make stuff that would that. Yeah. Like, why not? Fuck, not? God damn it. You hear it right now, right now, yeah, right, right now. here, legitly on the spot. Whatever we can get out of this issue, whether it's a uh, hundred dollars, whether it's five dollars to a yeah, million dollars, matter. whatever the fucking case would be, let's donate this. Yes. We're gonna go and literally, we're coming up with this on the spot. We're gonna look into like the you're best way to hearing it while it's developing it right now. We're gonna come up with the best way to do this. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna auction off that signed issue. We're gonna donate that money. Donate it in his name. Yeah, exactly. Well, of course, yeah. I mean, I'm sure I can get a copy of 35 down the road or whatever. I don't. I, and yeah, how I passionately he was talking about it, like he was yeah. saying that just watching that whatever commercial it was that. That inspired him to do this 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 issue. He said that 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 put him into tears. Yeah, and he, he instantly and pulled I, out like that would be a great story for Superman. And as you heard, and you said to him, yeah. that off mic, like no, no, su- on mic. It, was it, was it, that on mic? Okay, yeah, yeah. it was like uh, you you told him like that's such a hopeful story for such a, a character that inspires so much hope. Like, that, that I did a, say off mic. That yeah, was yeah, a yeah. perfect perfect pairing. Yeah, and you know what? Fuck it, let's do it. Yeah, let's, I'm let, totally let, down for it. Let, I will let, 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 let's let's set shit. up some kind of auction where we each contribute, no matter what it is. Each contribute every single penny. We won't take for our own personal gain. We won't take put towards this podcast. We'll put towards whatever children's hospital you want to All deciding it. to put towards. I, I love that idea. I want to do that. So I am completely down. Because uh, I did tell him. I, I just wanted to... Uh, the, the main you, thing I Your exact to words, off mic, as a spectator, like, verifying this, Vincent said, like, if I had the money, I would buy every single issue of this comic and bring it to a hospital and distribute to any child that is sick. Yeah. Like, I wish I was able to buy every issue I was able to and just hand it out. To be like, listen, this beautiful. should give you hope. There, it, it is such a hopeful issue. It, Superman number 39, it's not that old. I think it's like two issues behind. Uh, you should check it out if, if you haven't already. Yeah. But uh, yeah, th- I think that's going to bring us to the end of our show here. Guys, if you like... Let's end this show with hope. Yes. And if you liked this episode, liked it. If Subscribe if you loved it. Uh, don't forget to comment your thoughts on any of the stories or interviews or just... Uh, were you at Lexington Comic Con? Yeah. Tell us about oh, it. Oh, God, yes, please. Yeah. Tell us that you saw us off in the corner fucking doing whatever. Right? The Illustrious Tent, were you there? Yes. Um, and don't forget to share this episode. That is the best way to get us out in front of people and get us... To that next level. Share, like, comment, give us any feedback. You love us. You hate us. You're yes. If you us. hate Whatever. us, the hate comments are the best way to grow. I don't that is care the best what way it is. To give us out. some yeah. feedback. My name is Vincent Herman, been the human. Joining us today, it's Matt Owens. And if you didn't get to hear me before, uh, my name was Weird Beard. Weird Beard, like it. <laughs> Matt Owens, Weird Beard. Bob Collins, Bob Fett, and straight ahead of me, James Odell, Alpha Spectre, and cue that fantastic outro music. Oh yeah!